Disclaimer, we'd like to note before the start of this interview that the opinions about to be expressed by the guest on tonight's Get and Sell the Experience podcast are that of the guest and do not directly or necessarily reflect the views of the host of the Get and Salty Experience podcast. You're listening to the Get and Salty Experience podcast. Hello. Hello. Fat Daddy Ray back in the chat. Welcome yeah. back, Fat Daddy. Boy, do we miss Fat Daddy. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, what are you drinking? A uh, little Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig. What is that? Some bourbon. Gods, wow. they were pammering you in the chat. Because well, we were late. right now. That's not exactly. like me. You know, I'm usually on time, but you, you somebody call crazy. Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Gabe. Dick. <laughs> Reload his money gun, those battalion chiefs. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. We're going to meet Gabe so, at the. Uh, are you coming? You're not coming to Harrisburg, are you, Guns? No, no. Just the. Uh, all I can get away with the. Uh, unless you guys are buying, then maybe I'll go. When we're we going? going out to dinner with Gabe the first Thursday, I think, Gabe Fox. He's buying. Oh, oh yeah. I hope he's bringing his old lady. I don't know. We'll see. What'd you Harry. have? To, what did Rosie make you tonight? You were scattered out of here for dinner. Yeah, he was What'd quick, bro. He was quick. I had stew tonight. Stew. The red stew, motherfucker. Stew got. Stew got. <laughs> the red stew. Stew. Don't on, be falling down. Let's pull that. Fall down. Oh, let me give it to you. Hold on. Let me give it to you. Oh, oh wow. Man, right? Look at Damn. that thing. Oh. Holy mackerel. Not you got bad, the right? seventh head. I mean, got a little yeah. shine on that thing tonight, bro. Oh, I got to get me. I got to get the. The woman to get in here and get, you get a, a puff of like the big makeup girl, the big powder puff. puff. Yeah, yeah. Get some Maury's wigs. You know what I yeah. made tonight, bro? I made it. I saw this on TikTok. I made a giant meatball as a meatloaf. You dig out the inside. You put sauce. You put dried pasta, little uh, cheese on it, and then you pack it up. Cooks put it in, it in the oven. Cook the pasta inside. The oh my! Oh, Mwah. delicious! My, my forty percent guinea side came out rough. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. I thought it was more than 40. 40? Is it? I don't know what it is. I don't remember what the test said. I thought it was but four. We got a PhD guy, for God's sake. Oh, yeah. That's a smart How did guy. you get that? How did you get that guy? I gotta tell you, Fireman's got no business having a PhD. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> already in the pre in the pre-show. He was just you could just see his face. Like, just like, what the hell am I doing? It's like an uh, oxymoron, like jumbo <laughs> shrimp, right? Like <laughs> PH Dr. Fireman. I mean, that, you got no business having uh, being that uh, educated. Uh, I think he took a chapter out of uh, Jimmy or uh, what's his name, uh, Jackie Gleason's book. What the hell is the world coming to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's what he said. Yeah, that's it was, it was... Yeah, not only that, Smuck had this big and busy company has gone through a shit ton of fire. He went to fires, bro. Yeah, some company I never heard of. Yeah, rest twenty. One twenty. Twenty. Yeah. You know how I gotta ask him. He went from two hundred nine to one twenty in like twelve months, eleven months. I don't know how that happens, right? He had a PhD. Uh, oh, he had a PhD. <laughs> you're like, oh, you, you're a smart guy. You're coming over one twenty. <laughs> He's got about twenty two kids too. Something. You like college that. boy over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, let's play the commercial so we get uh, Captain Rotans in here. All right, here we go. We listen to Mister New Jersey Fire. Established in 1930 and under the current ownership since 1987, the New Jersey Fire Equipment Company handles a complete line of fire department equipment and supplies. Headquartered in Greenbrook, the company operates full 3M Scott service facilities in Ridgefield Park and Toms River, staffed by 10 fully authorized Scott certified technicians with a fleet of six fully equipped service vans. All New Jersey fire technicians and sales representatives are active or retired firefighters, officers or chief officers, career and volunteer. They understand the business and the importance of their work. New Jersey Fire has represented Scott since Earl Scott entered the SCBA business at the end of World War II. Among other leading manufacturers represented by New Jersey Fire are Globe and Firedex Turnout Gear, Mercedes Hose, Task Force Tips and Akron Brass, Hygienol, Fire Hooks, Arctic Compressors, MSA Carnes Helmets, ChemGuard Foam, Alkalite and Duo Safety Ladders, BA Face Shield Protectors, Truckman's Choice Saws, Grove's Gear Racks and Washer Dryers, SuperVac Fans, 
RPI, Streamlight, and many others. A New Jersey incorporated and based company, sales and service are limited to the state of New Jersey. Find us now at www.njfe.com. That's www.njfe.com. Wonderful. Quick Thank shout you. out to Tony B in the chat. Tony. 138 guy. Oh, yeah. Here, here, here. Oh, I got to give a shout out to 138 to the Corona Tigers. Yeah, man. They sent us some shirts. Sent us I'll some be wearing mine, bro. Very nice. Actually, I do that. We got another commercial quick or not? What do we got? Yeah, real oh, quick. Right. We got we got Mr. Uh, Usden. Oh, you come see us. Uh, yeah, we'll be yeah. Uh, This is our last show yeah. before we go head on the road to Indy. So come out and see us. All right, here we go. Come get your autographed copy of They Save New York at this year's FDIC 2024 at the Getting Salty booth. It's the nation's premier fire conference, and photographer Glenn Usden will be there, and he'll autograph your book at the aforementioned Getting Salty booth during exhibit hours on both Thursday and Friday, April 18th and 19th respectively. Each book will come with a limited edition 16 by 20 color poster that is suitable for framing. And this limited edition coffee table book features the compelling stories of 90 FDNY firefighters and is almost 300 pages packed with action photos from the 1970s all the way up to today's FDNY fire operations. Read the personal stories of the men and women who fought the Warriors fires, the World Trade Center, and Black Sunday tragedies and almost every major incident in the last 50 years of the FDNY. Come see us at the Getting Salty booth in the hallway outside the main exhibit area, Thursday and Friday of FDIC week, April 18th and 19th, 2024. Yep, and don't forget Friday, big party, Fire Ninja. If you they get cake, free beer. Let me say it again, free beer. They got some calendar girls hanging, handing out some shit. We do raffles. We'll raffle off some stuff. They raffle off some stuff. Good time. What booth? 10,000? 10,002. 10,002. 10, He's shaking his head at me already. We haven't even gotten on the road. He's already shaking his head at me. <laughs> it's exhausting, so, guys. You'll see. Yeah. All right. As he's signing helmets and shirts and everything. <laughs> Look at his face. Look, I'll do it. <laughs> Guys, come in there to see you. And you're not even gonna I'm not saying nothing. I, say I can face. shake their hand. I'm happy to stay. come. I'm, I'm yeah, happy. I'm sure you are. Except for the time that he was I'm not going to say it. All right, come up. Let's, <clears throat> let's bring Captain Rotans. Let's you ready, bring, uh, Guns? Smartest I am. Guy, maybe the smartest guy we've ever had on the show, be. possibly. Smart like everybody says. I'm smart, smart Mikey. Mikey. Not like everybody got, says. No. You got that one, Guns? Ready? No, no. I don't have it. I have it somewhere. I can't find it. All right, coming to the stage, FDNY Captain Rich Rotans. Woo! Baseball. Uh, oh, salute, is, Cap. What I have my doing? Elijah right here. Oh, Elijah. oh, you got Elijah too. See that? Absolutely, absolutely, guys. I feel like I'm watching one flew of a cuckoo's nest here. I'm like, I can't stop laughing. <laughs> oh my god. He ain't we lying. all know the same yeah. one here. We all know who's saying and who's not. Yeah, this is the true firehouse kitchen right here. <laughs> this is the kitchen table, uh, baby. Before we get started, Kobe. Yeah, yeah, here we, we go. gotta get patriotic. Yes, sir. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Apropos. Fat, fat. Apropos. Yeah, yeah. Darren says nailed it, just like being on shift. Yeah, Fat Daddy's gonna be out there too. He's right down the hall from us. So, oh, oh, yeah. Which one? Uh, FDIC. Yep. Oh, Darren yeah. said too much glad tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we knew that shit was coming. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Uh oh, see, he blocked it out. Now, oh, there we go. Oh, I'm yeah. back. I'm back. All right, Cap. Welcome back. to the show. Like we always do, we like to go back. And some of the older guys, we got to go back a little further. So we're gonna go back before. We know you got on. You're in, the, you're in the probie class with Chief Steve, smiling Jack over there. Let's go back <laughs> even further, though. Let's go back to the early days of a young Richard Rotans growing up in – what, would you grow up in St. Token? No, I was in uh, Queens. But, yeah, I was baptized in uh, Jackson Heights, and then we moved out to Flushing and uh, went to St. Andrews. And until uh, I was seventh grade, I was in oh. line to be an altar boy, believe it or not. 
But uh, yeah, we moved out to Setauket in 1965 when it was just up at farms. That's all. My father was a cop in 103. He's finally got a house, a brand new Volkswagen, and he was a living the world in 1965. 1965. Mm. So you started out in Jackson Heights, then you went over to Frushing before the Asian invasion, <laughs> right? Yeah, way before that. Way before that. Yeah. yeah. I'm allowed to say that because my wife's Asian. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. I got the Asian card. I can throw that down anytime I want. <laughs> we used to sneak into Shea Stadium all the time. We thought we did because the Cavs didn't care. No one was watching Casey Stangle and the Mets lose all the time. Oh, they sucked back then. Oh, in it was the, horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early yeah, 60s, right? Yeah, all right, yeah. so you move out to the boonies in the seventh grade. Yeah. Your dad's yeah. a cop, right? Any brothers and sisters? What do you got? I, I got two brothers, Bobby and Tommy. I'm the oldest, and uh, we all went to school there. I mean, you know, Bobby and Tommy were big sports guys, and they uh -huh. were uh, lacrosse heroes. So, uh Big time lacrosse defense guys, and uh, Bobby now is he owns a 365 seat restaurant. Then my brother Tommy's down to Marco Island, living a dream. Nice. Marco Island, nice. That's yeah. nice. Marco Island is nice. It's Didn't beautiful. you have property there, Ruff? Marco Island, Pine Island, Marco Island, oh, hey, Marco Island. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, where's your brother's restaurant? Up uh, Roanoke, Virginia, and oh, uh, he's, a bit. he uh, we graduated Roanoke, and uh, I think uh, it's 79 or so. Mm -hmm. And they opened up a place right across the street from the college. I had like three t stools, a couple of tables, and now he owns the block. And uh, look wow. at him, big He's doing, very, very good. In fact, uh, during uh, 2000, he sleeps, on the, he sleeps on these, right? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, those uh, road tents, boys, Kobe. You know, man, man. Ooh, Ooh, I, 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 I can tell you one thing. I'll bet you his younger brothers don't have a PhD. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! I knew that was coming. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, they're doing very good. I'm proud of the guys. Good for them. So, what what gets you involved in the fire service? I never had an inclination to be a fireman, and mm. uh, you know what? My father died in '68. He was died in a lot of duty in the 103 precinct. I was in you know, Vietnam War and cops with pigs, the whole bit. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, his father worked at mine. His father got seriously injured, so we were like pounding around together, and uh, I. Took off in 1970 to join the uh, Army Rangers and uh, Fort and uh, you know, Fort Benning, and the guys who waited for me from the 103 precinct. They go, "You kid, go back and take care of your mother." So my mother goes, "Why don't you become a fireman?" I go, "What?" So go talk to Mister Lincoln. It's not a block. He's with the volunteers. And ever since then, took off. You know, so that was 71. Uh, yeah, September 71. And September uh, 71. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, volunteer firehouse, kind of slow, but. It was a, a very rapidly building neighborhood. Uh -huh. And uh, the college turned into a university. We had a petroleum plant here with 50 huge large tanks. We had a you know, pretty strange but uh, crazy response area. We went you know, from like 700 runs a year till I became a chief in 85, uh, 87. We were doing like 2,000. It was nuts. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed it. I was, it was a change in my life. I, my mother goes, yeah, I've become a fireman. And I did. What, so what did kind of work were you doing then, Cap? Not to interrupt you, cool. Uh, no, I... Uh, when I was uh, in 71, I was a uh, grease monkey at one of the local garages, and I, uh, I became an EMT and a medic, and I did a couple of jobs with, like, stat ambulance and places in the Bronx and all that. But I uh, became a, a, a medic and then also an OR nurse over at Matt the Hospital. And uh, oh. it was kind of busy because there was no trauma center yet. Stony Brook wasn't built up yet. And uh, it, it was good. Very. In fact, the women I worked with, this is like 1973 or so, not, not too far after World War II. One woman was a POW the Battle of the Bulge. Two wow. nurses worked in mass units in Korea. And there were three girls that worked in Nam. And I, I really had a good experience with these. Two. These ladies, they were tough. They were really I tough. I was going to say, you had to up your game there, man. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> big, man. You know, oh, and let me tell you shit. something. Working with women, you'd be sitting there having a, a smoke or a cup of coffee in the ER. All right. And then we could tease it because, man, you're a 21 year old stud. I know what I could do with like a. Yowza. Forget about it. That was good. It. It, it was a good learning experience. I, uh, you know, especially in the OR and uh, work as a paramedic and on the OR. I brought that skill set into the fire service because, uh, and I had all the guys coming into the ER and working in the OR that had, you know, lung cancer and other issues from fighting fires and so on because nobody was using packs then. Mm. I joined the Satoka Fire Department. The packs were in a box in the back of the rig, mm. you know, and there was huge, huge cylinders. And uh, we had rubber gloves. We had plastic helmets. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm telling you, we had we were you, were, you were like I a match. Red, red party helmet. 
<laughs> you were like a match ready yeah. to go. <laughs> oh, it was crazy. But, you know, I learned with a couple of guys that were uh, instructors at Yamp and in Nassau, and they were tough guys. They were, came from, you know, the Navy, the military, and uh, we mm -hmm. learned about, you know, our, our Navy bayonets and pine yeah. pineapples, nozzles, and so on. And uh, it was a good experience. A lot of good guys. You know, they're all past now. That was 52 years ago. So when did you take the test? I took the test in uh, 77 and uh, took with a bunch of guys from the island. And uh, I remember the physical fitness test was insane. They had a ledge walk. I yeah, think you really talk about, about that all the yeah, time. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. I built a ledge walk with me and Ray uh, Trinkle, who was a, a retired captain of 176. I built the goddamn thing in my cellar and I had the pack. It went back and forth so many times it destroyed my, my panel, my, my, my panel of the wall. But when I took the test over at the armory in Brooklyn, boom, I beat it. I beat the nine seconds. So the, the guy goes, that's phenomenal. Can you show us again? I go, you want me to break my ankle on this or lose the job? <laughs> no, that's right. But it was a tough test, a tough physical test, and they threw it out later on because right. it was too hard. And uh, But I got on a job. You know, and, uh, you got on before all that took place. You got in February 79, right? Correct, yeah. Right. Yeah, so, it was freezing cold there at Randall's Island. I mean, you're out there in your shorts and your sneakers doing push-ups. Like, what am I doing? Kill me. Yeah. So, oh, that. please. No slickers, baby. <laughs> that was the most Brady uniform known to man. Yellow slickers. What the hell? <coughs> they were all well, we got one with the helmet, too, right? Looks like, uh, looks like the tryout for the uh, fish stick commercial. From <laughs> Gordon's, uh, Gordon, 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 the fisherman. Fisherman. Oh, fisherman. Oh, my Gordon the Fisherman. Gordon the Fisherman. Oh, yeah. shit. That's freaking up cluster. <laughs> it was like humiliating, but they're all civil defense uh, outfits. That's, That's crazy. Was. And uh, <laughs> it's like we're going around, but you know, you, you have to do what you have to do. And then uh, yeah. you have to buy your own gear and all that. But, oh, uh, you know who else was in your class? Hank Malay. He's in, he's in the show a lot. Is he? Hank, yeah, he comes on the show a lot. He was minor Louis Senior Man in the squad. Was he? Yeah. The squad. What's the who squad? Else? Oh, the squad, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, good, wow. good one, Cap. He still got it. He still got it. He still has it. See, He's yeah. Warming up. Where are you, Cap? Top left? Is that top left? Yeah, that's the All baby right. face there. Oh, look at that! Look yeah. at those things. You guys didn't actually go into fires like in training with those things, did you? No. God, no, no, no. We did, didn't have any live fires back then, but we had uh, a smokehouse, mm. and uh, the guys were kind of nervous about the smokehouse. So I said, "Listen, guys, here." I gave him each a piece of wet rag. Take this and follow my lead. Now, the guy that was the instructor, he had the pack on. He couldn't see shit. So he goes, all right, you guys, how are we doing? And everybody would take the mat, the, their, uh, their rag off. We're doing fine. <laughs> he goes, hmm, we'll sing uh, Mary Had a Little Land. Mary had a little. He's like, what's going on? He opened the door. He goes, Rotez, you're done. Because <laughs> you know we had the regs that otherwise we'd be dying. With that he cut Coobs, the PhD was already in. It was already. I was already smart guy. He's already smart. See, yeah, he's smart. wicked smart. Wicked like everybody smart. says. Yeah. Like everybody says. I'm it was smart. a good time. Really good time. So, so did you know where you were going at, at that point? Did you know where you wanted to go? Anything well, like that? I was asking guys like you know Al Jordan. God rest his soul. He was my uh, my property <laughs> lieutenant, and his son is now. You know, staff yeah, Joe John. Yep. Yeah. But he's another, he's a fire protection engineer, Joe. Smart guy. Yeah. Very oh, smart. Oh, no, that's smart guy. Smart and, guys uh, like to, to hang around together, Roof. You know what I mean? <laughs> they walk into each what do you think they're going to hang around with us? <laughs> nah, nah. Well, maybe it'll make uh, them feel smarter if that's possible. Well, I was I was talking to a friend of mine, Jack McCormick, at the time. He was with the Satorka Fire Department. He was Lieutenant 108. He goes, I'll put you over in 209. I had no idea what it was. And he goes, It's on Bedford Avenue, 102 truck, and three, place. four time. And it was a good place. You know, I had the great guys who was working with there, uh, Sam Giamo and Tommy Marks and God, as I saw Billy McGovern, who was battalion chief. I think he was killed in Tower One. Uh, uh, Joe, uh, Barbera, Chief Barbera, uh, Dennis Cross, and, uh, you know, Eddie Gonzalez. A lot of really good guys. And, uh, I enjoyed it there. And uh, my neighbor down the block from my parents, this guy, Pete McGreevy, God, as I saw he was a lieutenant in uh, 120. He goes, why don't you come over to 120? I go, sure. It's, it's a busy house. <laughs> and uh, his, his two sons played the cross with my brothers. So I stopped over. I saw uh, the captain, and uh, and he, he was a good, great guy. And uh, he says, why don't you come on over? And in April of uh, 1980, uh, we went over to 120 truck. And uh, was, I mean, that was an unfortunate year in my view. We had Fitzpatrick and Fisby killed up in Hall <clears throat> with the rope. Yeah. And that incident started safety command, which he followed. He 
you know, got a bunch of very smart battalion chiefs to investigate a lot of the injuries and death and so on. Then we had uh, Devaney that was killed over in 332. And uh, the Italian prince, Chief Tolando, he was killed on Christmas Street. We had a building collapse right on the block from the firehouse. That was like August 13th, 1980. And uh, it was very sad yeah, in that respect. But uh, I at 120, it was a great firehouse to work at. Funny. Uh, it's unbelievable. But I worked with great guys like uh, you know uh, Tom Cleary, Pete McGreevy, Georgie May, and Jimmy Menahan, who's, who's absolutely nuts. You know, uh, Louis Montagnier. There had to be a Wetzel there at some point, right? He was know. before me. <laughs> There's and been it, like five generations of Wetzels in that firehouse, I think. Right, exactly. And, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I see a sign here, Anthony yeah. Bellisari. Yeah, sorry to distract you. He, he was trying to be funny. Public high school know. diploma. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally. totally. But, uh, you know, I really, uh, I learned a lot over 120. Uh, we worked uh, detailed with 176 truck, which was insane. Uh, 227 over on, on uh, Ralph Avenue. But uh, I enjoyed work with them. I was trying all type of deals. I used to play around with the uh, scale ladder at drills. And I one time I was going inside the building and I threw the hook of the scale ladder over the roof. And his Lieutenant Charlie Miranda, I got him right in the ass. He goes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Kick your ass. I come up, Is you okay? You, you okay, Lou? Get over here. So, uh, but then uh, on a uh, one particular night, we had uh, running around. It was a busy night, and uh, the lieutenant got hurt. So Paul McFadden was the acting lieutenant, and we got a call with uh, 176, 232 at the time before they got disbanded, and uh, 227 is coming in. And we had an all hands at arrival down Bergen Street, and uh, there's people out, you know, the usual out the fire escape, everybody waving hello, you know, and where's my delivery? And I go around the rear because it was a vacant rear, and I see a woman with two kids, the fifth floor, holding them at the window. Ah, shit. So I called it in. I said, listen, we got a woman at the top floor window. I know that one, my guy and 176, Larry Senso, they're going to the roof to do a roof press. I put the scale on it. So I went from window to window. They'll tell you about the glass. Come on. Did you and really the, do that? They didn't tell you about the glass. I'm going for the second to the third to the fourth floor, and 233 has got a line on me, hitting the fire as I go up there. And I finally get the, the, the gooseneck into the window, not knowing about a kitty bar. As I'm climbing, Boom! It drops about a foot. So did my ass. Up. I, it's really crazy. <laughs> so I finally get up there. I'm holding mom. She's giving me the kids. Yeah, exactly. And uh, but they don't tell you about the glass and stuff. This is all you know empty. Yeah, but you're practicing. It's just an open window all the yeah, time. Like that. <laughs> so, uh, so I got you know I stabilized here. The guys from the roof were present. They got the kids. They brought them down. And then I uh, I come in and um, I was wow. pumped up. I was pumped up. So I bring the scale in the window, and who I bump into with the scale letter was Leah Elby. He goes, "What are you doing with that?" Dog? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so the guy's rescue too goes, "What is this kid doing?" <laughs> so I bring it downstairs, and I hear the, the acting uh, deputy chief. Uh, I forget the guy's name. He was a really great guy. He wrote an article on the uh, Pine Street fire. He uh, retired as uh, a, the borough commander. Anyway, uh, I, I I dent. The end of the, the scale letter. So I come downstairs, standing at attention. He goes, 120 OV. What the hell did you do to the goddamn scale letter? I'm like, I'm sorry, Chief. It was just an act. He grabs me by the head, gives me a lip lock, takes a picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, it's uh, okay, fine. So I was uh, going to say, you had to get a medal for that. Did you get something for that? Uh, they wrote me up, but uh, because it was me and two of the guys that wrote up, we all got Come A's. Come on. That's, so why? That's you know, crazy. That's well, the 80s. That was the 80s in 120, right? I mean, you had to do – I mean, that's extraordinary. I mean, that's not something like uh, – come on. That's pretty – That's pretty. Well, I used to like – Not too many guys have done that. No, I think only seven of us is 1865. You know, and That's uh, crazy, man. There's another guy that did it in the uh, 70s. And uh, and I uh, I grabbed a scaling ladder. I said uh, – when he took him off the rigs, I go, I'm going to take this home. Yeah, hell yeah. So I took it home and I gave it the Portia Fire Department. It's in the museum. That's cool. nice. You know, so, uh, yeah. But I used to like all these weird tools, like the 20-foot hook. Remember the 20-foot hook? I used no, to try and, and, and carry it from the end. The 20-foot <laughs> hook that was on the towel lines. Oh, yeah. You know, there was a marquee. They had a building explosion around a block, and the marquee was leaning. So I told the chief, Chief Clark, I go, listen, I got this big hook. Good. I, I don't want to know nothing, bitch. <laughs> so me and Rescue 2, at the time, they, they were there. We pulled the marquee now, and it worked. I used to like, you know, like the log gun. All right? Not too many yeah, people yeah, realize yeah, yeah, it's yeah. that the log guns are the job. So I'm in the back of Rescue 2's quarters. It's like 86 or so. And uh, I get the log gun out. 
And the cops are coming by. He goes, what are you guys carrying guns for? I go, yeah, they, were, no, no. they were serious. Like, why do I have this rifle with me? And I explained to him. They didn't Captain, realize what it was for. Yeah, right. The yeah, rope. and I'm shooting the, the, the rope on top of the, uh, <laughs> the, the clock lights and so on. They were all taking turns. Uh, yeah, now they're into it. Oh, sure. You know, so uh, they, they, they the, the thing is with ESU, he goes, watch out for Rescue 2. They carry guns. So, I, don't, I don't want, yeah, I don't want to get too far. What was it like for you, like, in that area when you first went to 120? Like, what was it, like, you guys were doing probably – the most runs in the city, right? Or one of the top companies doing doing the most runs in the 80s. Well, you, 80s. you had 103, 111, 120 in the Brooklyn, then you had the Bronx companies and so on. It was just nuts. I mean, maybe six grand at the time. I, I couldn't really tell you, but it was a lot. And my first day pulling up to uh, to the firehouse, they had a fire team. They were just like going with the fires. And I showed up and the one guy goes, grab the goddamn pizza, kid. I'm like, okay, run the back and get the pizza, give it to him. And I go up to the top to my locker on the uh, third floor. And there's a guy on the side. There's a roof, like a setback. He's sitting there with a sitar playing this Indian song. <laughs> look at that. He goes, what's up, man? <laughs> he was chilling. Like, yeah, well, he uh, he became an officer on a job. And, all, and uh, I said, I'm just, who I was. He goes, cool. Just cool. Like Pickin Avenue. I can't even imagine. I know what it was like in 2000. I can't imagine what it was like in 1980. It was I, the kids across the street were always playing basketball. The, the kids in the neighborhood were always watching out for our cars. We never had any problems. Okay. Uh, one day I came into uh, quarters with Jimmy. Uh, oh, God. Anyway, I bring in two lacrosse sticks. And uh, yeah, that's great firehouse, man. Yeah, I just want to share while you're talking. Yeah. And uh, across the street. And uh, we, uh, Jimmy, Sony, and I are throwing around a ball with lacrosse sticks. And the kids in the neighborhood go, what is that? You never see a lacrosse stick. So I show the kids the lacrosse stick, show them how to play the, you know, back and forth. The following week, they all have sticks. They're, they're wailing these balls at each other. They were good. <laughs> you know, they're really good. But, uh, you know, I, at 120, you know, the thing I liked about 120, besides the work, every time we went to a job, Pete McGreevy or the captains, whoever it was there, we were always talking about the job there. At the scene, I don't care if it's ice storm, snow, whatever the case, hot day, whatever. You were going always, over everything. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we learned to use tools. You know, use our, our most important tool is our brain. And, uh, you know, how to pick up a car with a, a, a tire and a tire iron or a ladder, you know, things like that nature. You know, and using the, uh, uh, the closet door instead of a, a door into the room for a guy to put on a backboard because it's much narrower than a window. Things of that nature that... Uh, Wow, you know that that was very basic to uh, to the field, um, and we, we had really you know great offices there. I mean, I would sit there and talk to the, the chief clock and chief Coghlan like four o'clock in the morning, you know. And one morning I hear uh, mayday, mayday, mayday. I go, what the f-? on on our radios, our uh, personal radios. Like, go ahead to mayday. The guy went down into our cellar for the outside entrance. He stole radios and he's calling day days of the projects. He goes, so who had the house watch? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but the guy went down, took a couple of radios and screaming May Day. And uh, they finally caught the guy. But, uh, you know, things of that nature. But uh, who were the other fight. offices there? Uh, we had Pete McGreevy, Paul Jetta. Oh, my God. Bill Beasley was a battalion chief. Uh, Clark, Telemundo, who passed away. Um, yeah. Uh, Bauman was the captain of the engine when I got there. Then Brendan McCormick was the captain. Uh, just a, a handful of great guys. It's uh, they're, they're, They were just marvelous. We were always training. <clears throat> but the, the jokes were just, you know, some of the firemen I thought were great, like Louis Montillon. He's uh, like this. They're speaking of uh, Louis right there. You got um, Perot, Carl Perot to the right. And the guy that's uh, on resting on the rig, I keep, forgot, I can't remember his name. But uh, they were all really good guys and uh, always training, like I said. <clears throat> These guys were working with you, correct? Uh, two, uh, three of the guys, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cap, you know what I always just think? Like back then, you guys wouldn't have to drill so much. <clears throat> you, th- you would think because you were going to so much work, you know, that you, you probably would, you know, you would want to rest or whatever because you were going from job to job. But the more guys we get on, that's almost the exact yeah. opposite, it seemed like. Guys were talking about fire all the time, right? All the time. All the time. <clears throat> like, you know, like like the officer, like McGreevy or Jetter or, or Bobby Babstock was a captain at one time. He came out of Rescue 4. He was a really good guy. Him and Jimmy Basil, uh, the wolf out of 102 yeah, yeah, yeah. 11, mm-hmm. Jimmy Basil, they were both nurses. And they found out I was a nurse. And they, uh, they had their own business, though. But uh, 
Bob, Bob Sack was a tough captain. And he goes, Dickie, Dickie, take care of your body because your mind's fucked up. You know, <laughs> 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 French. But, uh, uh, he was a good captain. Uh, yeah, Nick Visconti would travel through. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, one day I came, I came into work, all right, and I had uh, my wife gave me a sweater. And it's, I only wore it once. It had snowflakes on it. So I go into court and say, I don't cap. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever come in here with that again. Oh, my God. And, uh, they had, uh, oh. it's just, it, the, the last was, was the, but the training, it didn't matter if how busy you were. What did you do, Rotanus? What did you do, Kenny Yard? What did you guys right. do? Why? What was your screw-ups? Why were you this particular safe? But you would, that that you were on trial, that everybody wanted to know what you were doing at the time. And uh, it was it was really good. And uh, the kitchen, dinner time, we would talk about the jobs, constantly talking about it. Except for this one guy, uh, Pete. I'll, I'll remember his name in a few minutes. He was a big guy. He always loved his uh, his gambling and his horses. And he bet on a horse called Dum Diddy Dum Dum. And the guys were laughing about this guy. He put $1,000. It's 1980, $1,000. That's crazy. Dum Diddy Dum Dum. He won. 20 to 1. Oh. But, wow, uh, Pete Budniak, big guy, big guy. He's he not won a lot of money, but but uh, he was a tough guy, big guy. Then you know, they, there is always one gambler, right? Out of out of all the guys, there's yeah. always like one degenerate. There's always <laughs> like, one degenerate. <laughs> like one, one degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> Correction, I, Pap, I I stand corrected. The, the uh, we had this one fellow, uh, Tom Cassio, great guy. I used to terrorize this guy to no end, to no end. He would fall asleep in a busy night, and I would tape his bed. It was with the duct tape, and he couldn't. Even, it couldn't even get up. And I would stand at the end of the bed, hi Tom, fall <laughs> into the bed, you know. But uh, it's the, the, they had this one guy, Bobby West, cute, balls a cue ball. He was a nice guy. He came in uh, one night from a party. He was really, uh, he was out of it. So he always wore a toupee. So the guys with the fishing, you know, clips with the fishing line, you know, hooked onto his uh, toupee, and they would. The engine goes. The engine goes. He's probably still working <laughs> down at down the pole. There's his toupee. Anyway. So, <laughs> exact nature, and uh, you know. But yeah, you, you look for the. Uh, you, you know, you can't show anybody your weakness because they'll just capitalize oh. it. You know, but it's like a gazelle, right? A bleeding gazelle in the savannah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like yeah. the lions and the tigers yeah. and the bear, everything. Uh, was, we had this one guy from. Uh, it was it was it was a detail. It was kind of weird detail. It was a one thirteen truck. <clears throat> it was a different battalion, and. Uh, the guys called us up. He goes, this guy is very queasy. So you really can't talk about getting sick. That's the other thing. <laughs> I still need to know. So uh, this guy, uh, not Carl Perot, but one of the, uh, McCarthy, he had a bag of stew. He's going, he's, this guy is now is turning white. I go, you okay? You're right. Hey, McCarthy. You're no, all over on. the table. <laughs> now everybody chipped in. I'll take this. We have this piece and this, this carrot, you know. And the guy just, you know, went to the men's room with this. <laughs> but you gotta love it. That's a good one, guys. How, wait, before you before you went to 120, how did the guys in, in 209 and 105 feel or react when you when you left there? 102. But, well, I no, oh, 209, 102. I'm sorry, right? Yeah. You know, it was uh I was getting uncomfortable about it, but the lieutenant, you know, but the officer said you'd make it a good move. There was no room in 102. So that was like a, a little excuse, so to speak. Right. And uh, but the guys in injury, they always treat well. You know, they uh, didn't have any animosity. The chief said, you know, good. Pete Pavekas was the captain. He goes, all right, you're going to 120. Don't ever come back. <laughs> and that's what he was. But uh, you know, I, I, there wasn't a bit of problem. The guys in 102, 209, do do a gentleman. You know, and there is another firehouse. But like 209, if we did 2,500 runs a year, it was yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. There it wasn't that much sleep. But we, that's why we ran know. it with the, uh, you know, what uh, 211, ran with 210. Once in a while, we'd run it with 214, the nut house. Right. You know, and uh, so it was a good house. on top of each other over there. Well, that's why 209 is gone. Yeah, correct. You know, they uh, they took away the 209 and the uh, the three four battalion. I, I covered in 102 quite a bit, and I, I cannot say how many times the truck went out without the engine. Like we would go out of quarters, make a right, make a left, and go towards 111 every time. <clears throat> and right. uh, that's where you know they talk about how many engines are around 111 for God's sakes, right? They're surrounded by engines over there. Right, 235 and two, yeah, all those companies. 27, but 217. I had, I had a guy. I'm looking at the guys, and now he's this big strapping guy. His name is Mike. He's teaching me how to use the computer because we were transitioning for the bells, and I had to get used to the bells. You know, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, and 
all the way to 10 and all the way to nine. Like, all right, two and nine goes, right? And he goes, this is what you do when you get the run. You go 10, 4, send. Okay, how hard could that be? 102 is out in the road. All right. 10, 4, send it. <laughs> all right, 10, 4, send it. They had no idea they're going to, to a run. Now you hear Brooklyn to 102. Yeah, 102 goes, where are you guys? I thought you said 10, 4. He goes, what do you got? Second alarm at arrival. <laughs> Jerry brought Barrow as the lieutenant. <laughs> he comes home. He goes, you on house watch? I do a loop. How's it going? You do that again, I will destroy you. <laughs> what do I do? He explains to me. He goes, you don't do 10 4 set. You just let it go. No one you let it go, that. right. I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm hitting the bells. Truck goes. The whole, but, but, uh, hey, shit happens. Guys, the guys in the chat were talking. Uh, I saw a little bit. And we've talked about this on the show. Like when, you know, nowadays, if you screw up at a job, like going back to what you were saying, like everybody would talk about what you did at a job, right? And then if you screwed up, hopefully in a good way, the guys would put you on the track and say, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And, and you could come back pretty quick in your time. Like you could have a job in an hour, right? And you can make up for it. Somebody else would be on the hot seat, right? right. Nowadays, you ah. screw up. It could be weeks, months, who the heck knows before you yeah. get an opportunity to redeem yourself. You know, we talk right. about that a lot. Like you guys had that, you could screw up and then in an Tomorrow, hour later. Yeah. Job. An, an hour. hour later. Well, one of my biggest screw ups, <clears throat> okay, had a, uh, two buildings roaring on a, a very hot summer day on Howard Avenue. And I had the roof. First time I got the roof. All right. So I look and I got three buildings. I'm thinking three buildings. There's only two. So there's Jack Kane for 103 and Posa for 103. And they're standing at the hooks and I'm cutting. They go, good job. I did the, the coffin cut. I did every cut by the book. I pull the thing up. And it's, it's Jack is going, this kid's great. I'm in the wrong goddamn building. <laughs> 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 I punched off the ceiling down. There's a guy that big strap in African American. I goes, what? The fuck? I'm gone. <laughs> you know, uh, unreal. So, yeah, that was one of my uh, brighter days. But uh, I learned fast. So no, I had to make I, I sure. Have yeah, that's uh, one for the books. When did when did you start even thinking about, like, were you studying at all at this point or you weren't studying? I was always hitting the books just to learn the job. Okay, just basically training manuals, some of the AUCs, some of the safety uh, manuals, just to, like, to know. I was always had this fear. I mean, especially when I was working in the hospital, I, I was constantly reading. You want to make sure I make sure I got the right uh, OR equipment for that particular patient. So I always, not to be a perfectionist, but I just wanted to do the right thing. And, uh, and then eventually in 120, like the later years, we had a bunch of study groups. You got to realize Al Hay, Jimmy Menahan, Georgie Mayer, we all became the chiefs or commissioners, whatever the case may be. And uh, it was a great study group. And uh, we would call Jerry Tracy to 108, going back and forth. What did you hear about this? And what information you have this? It was so like the last year when I went to perform the rescue two, it got pretty heavy. And then when I went to rescue two, I started the study groups over there. So who you had to go? Was Danny was there at the time, right? How, Captain Danny was uh, no, and uh, uh, John Vigiano, uh, Richardson, and uh, I don't think the other guy's name, but they were. It was a good place. But we were in Carlton Avenue, right? And uh, with the two ten engine, two ten, yeah. You know, and that was a pain in the ass every time you got to go back and forth and move the rig out of the way and so on. Bunch to nuts, yeah. It was a, 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 but that was a good fire. I, I, I had, yeah, that's one twenty. Where the that's hell one. was this? I believe that was on. Uh, I was looking it over. I was looking at the background. I think that was on Junior Street. Somebody sent me this. They, let me. I'd have to look. Uh, who sent it to me? Uh -huh. I guess they used to ride, or they they used to ride with one twenty, and they took this picture. He said that was that a, a job or something like that. It could have been. I'm just standing there holding onto the bulkhead. Uh, at uh, the, the old green, the yellow flashlights there on the side there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had my uh, elevator keys on my uh, helmet. Uh, but I believe that's 1981. They don't call them one two orders for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, there was an elevator school from the housing department in that in our response area, and ESU was going there. We were going there, and nice the housing guys. goes. The great class, really good class. <clears throat> so when did you decide that you want to make the move to two? I was talking to Dennis Mojica. God rest his soul. All right, Dennis went over to 120. Oh, to rescue two. And I'm talking to him, uh, John Simpson 176, Mike Penn 176. And uh, you know, I was talking to Bob Babstock. He goes, Richie, you got to go. You're a hearse tool instructor. You're a nurse. You did some rigging. You fit the picture. So why don't you go? So I went to see uh, Downey. How you doing? He's shaking his head. 
Okay, very good. We'll uh, we'll get back to you. By the time I get back to Cody, so uh, Babstock goes, you must impress him. You're going over there next Tuesday. That's right, really? Cap. Babstock. We had him on the show to Captain too, right? That's Babstock. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was oh. great. The it's uh, where's he living now? Because he wasn't sold in Long Island. I think he goes back and forth from Florida, doesn't he, Rook? I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, so. I got to get a hold of him. He's uh, I'll get you his number. Smart guy. Really, I mean, I enjoyed working with him because you know both nurses him and Basil the Wolf. And uh, I asked the guys when I was in 209, because he used to cover over 102 and came out of 111. I go, why do they call the wolf? He goes, watch me. He came in. He came <laughs> no in. Hands. He, he came in with a, a, a plate of six cooked chickens. I go, oh, that's good for the meal. He goes, ah, no, it's mine. I got that. He's like, he ate all of them. He wow. ate all four chickens. I'm like, how does this guy live? No way. <laughs> uh, but unbelievable! But they got like boobs. <laughs> Jenny Bezos. Oh, we had we had a bunch of pigeons on the roof. I forget the guys used to fly them all over the place. But uh, Jimmy Bezos was good, and Bob Babstock. They had a co company together. They did you know I think medical equipment back and forth, and they would ask me questions. Go said so they, they use it as face shadow with you know with tractors there in the OR. I go they still do. You know so we had that little commonality there. But Bobby was a great guy. But that's that, that I went to rescue too. And, uh, so you went the following week. Who, who, what are the other guys that were working there when you went there? Oh, a rescue was uh, David Van Vorst. I mean, we went to probably school with you know with your brother, uh, Pete Harris, uh, Dennis Mohica, Terry Hatton, Patty Brown, uh, Jay Fishler, Ray Downey, of course, Billy Ewison, Al Stein had Jack Lee House. Wow, and uh, uh Mike Penn. Was, was the Vidge there then, too? The Vidge was uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I, I'm sitting there and he comes in the kitchen and I stand up and go, How you doing, Lieutenant? He goes, well, Who are you? I go, Richard Rock Dance from 120. He walked away, <laughs> <laughs> like, guy, right, like, you know, I, I get the macho <laughs> stuff like that. So, uh, the later on, they were at the uh, the roll call, they made a film. Like I said, I was from City Island or something, I was from <laughs> 120, for God's yeah. sake. Well, yeah, from him, 103, and so on, but uh. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were great guys, and uh, I miss them all. I mean, uh, I mean Jay Fishler. I don't know if you know Jay Fishler. He, oh, uh, we're trying we to get him on the we show see forever. Him all the time at the show. He won't come on. I'm going to tell you a Jay Fisher story. Awesome. Okay. We're going to hit him with it. Yeah, hit him with it. and he loves it too. I mean, he's, he's suffering from bad lungs and all that stuff. But we, uh, he gets on. He goes, "Hey, how are you doing, Ken? How are you doing? You got the show for me. yeah? I'll try, no problem." So we were talking back and forth about the drill, showing around the rig, and uh, we got a job to go to a third alarm in downtown Brooklyn. I mean, way down, right? So we get to the job and I'm feeling him out. He's feeling me out and he was pretty good. You know, he's, he's a good officer and stuff. So on the way back, so he goes, uh, so where are you from, Rich? Uh, I'm from Setauken. Oh, yeah, so you know my brother. You know your brother? Yeah, Dave Fisher is the commissioner out in the Empire. He goes, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're a Jewish guy from St. James? I thought you were a guinea from Brownsville. He goes, oh, you busted my balls. But, uh, he, <laughs> so uh, he's doing good. And uh, I, I, I love him to death because his brother was the commissioner for Fred's Fire Rescue Emergency Service. And I, I talked to that Dave on and off. And he's a smart guy, in fact. Uh, Cap, he can't, when we see him, he starts telling stories. It's bubbling oh out of him, God. right? But we say, come on the show. He says, talk to my agent. I can't. I'm not coming on. I'm not coming on. <laughs> He says, yeah. yeah, talk to my, make it, set it up with my agent, but he won't, as of right I'm now. I'm all the time. You sit here and tell me stories while you're in my booth for an hour. And you can't come on the show. Can't, it's bubbling out of him, you know? Yeah. And then he marries Terry. And then uh, they right. have a boy. And their boy, I think, was born the same time as your twins in, in 2002. 2001, my, my twins were born. My twins were born in 2002. And his, his son is about the same age. The same with uh, Terry Hatton and, uh, and Beth. They have a girl, Terry, who was born in May of 2002. So, uh, yeah, Jay is uh, he's quite a character. Very smart. Very smart okay. guy. Always impressed. Yeah, yeah, good. I'll, I'll call him up. Get Bust his balls, will you? Without a doubt. No problem. He's going to say, talk to my agent. <laughs> he's going to say, talk to my agent. <laughs> I'm going to say, hey, Jay, this is your agent. What's going on? <laughs> we made an appointment already. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we scheduled it. You scheduled it. Scheduled it. Yes. Scheduled it. Uh, so, so what, what you got it? any good fire yeah, stories from rescue too well rescue we were in, in, when i first started was in carlton avenue we were right. there for about six months or so and uh i just was infatuated by the work that we're going to and uh downey tells me he goes listen uh, we're going to uh, move the firehouse we're going to bergen street you know what it is I go yeah right. i know it's pretty sure it's connected so he goes i want you to go down there and size up the building for us so i go down there and uh i see a lot of uh, african-american kids it was one of those uh <clears throat> oh, it, it's sent a fire unit. They go and clean up salvage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salvage there. And uh, I hear that the, the captain comes downstairs. Nice guy. He goes, who that for you? And he said, Richard Rochester's rescue too. He goes, 
you guys aren't moving here. I don't give a rat says. This is a very famous firefighting unit. And I'm looking around, and the, the kids, the, 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 the kids are going like, no, we're not, no, we're not. <laughs> but uh, we moved into Bergen Street, and uh, it was a small firehouse. And yeah, then, uh, the, the one rigged back into the corners. So I'm like, this is going to cave in. <laughs> you got like three inches on each side, literally. Oh, my God. But uh, that's when we moved in there. And I think I sent you a picture of uh, the guys in front of uh, Bergen Street Firehouse, you know, all of Rescue 2. And uh, no, it was, uh, you, you didn't send me that one. So if you send it to me, I'll pull it up. I was trying to find um, it. I didn't, I didn't see that one. Maybe you contact. texted that one to me? That's all right. Anyway, uh, we had Glenn Harris who was working there. He was just insane, Glenn. I just talked to him the other day. Did you? I did. He used so to do a thousand sit-ups every day. Every day. And he who, who would you want coming for you, Cap? I used to say Glenn Harris. <laughs> we have the old school firehouse, but I've just been in the meantime until Coop sent me that one. Mm -hmm. I yeah, used to say Glenn Harris. He is uh he was a tough guy. He really was tough. You know, his father. Glenn, uh, Chief Harris and the other fellow, another uh, another chief, they were both engineers. They designed the, the rock. And I was sitting there one time talking to his father. He goes, you know how Tower 1 is in Building 1 with all the classes? I go, yeah. Do you know why it's made that way? I have a clue. He goes, that Building 1 faces the Empire State Building. And it's on a, it's designed as a trapezoid. So if they bomb us and nuclear power, a nuclear bomb hits Manhattan over the Empire State Building, it will deflect off this building. Oh my it, goodness gracious. I go, but chief, who's going to be left? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. We just built it that way. The, but, the uh, shit plant will be left. <laughs> that'll be yeah. the only thing that's left. Mm -hmm. But uh, Glenn was, uh, he was tough. He was a, a very tough fireman. He's just, he made a halogen tool that was six and a half feet long. And he drilled a hole through it. I go, what are you going to do with this? Where we happen to be in a, to drill like a six story uh, H type. Just watch. He puts it up the window, throws his uh, over bond, he scales out. Like, where's he going? Yeah, but I've seen that guy do some crazy stuff, man. Yeah, some crazy but, uh, stuff. They call him, used to call him Goathead. <laughs> goathead. Bah. That was Dr. Dick. He was Goathead. <laughs> Dr. Dick. I, I, was, I asked the captain in the, in the <laughs> we, we used to We used to ask. There was Dick, Dick Frayne was in uh, 290. He was my chauffeur. And the guys used to hit him, I mean, every day. Hey, you got any gum on your dick? I mean, it just oh, never got old. It was just always never get old. old. Yeah, but that, I had, you know, like Terry Hatton, Mr. Serious, okay? Like, hey, Terry, how you doing? Richard Gortiz. How you doing? I'm Terry. Okay. So we started talking, to, uh, you know, study for lieutenants. You know, we became good friends. And Patty Brown, all day long, he's hitting the bag. You know, it's like he's always hit, hit the, uh, the punchy bag. He was a good right. boxer. Right? boxer, right. Very good. And uh, his brother became a doctor, I think. Up in Boston, his brother and, yeah, Michael brother passed away. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A few we, years we back, we just did a show on. We had his sister on, and uh, Chief Jay Jonas. We did a tribute show to to uh, Patty Brown. Yeah, good guy, Patty. Incredible He's, uh, guy, man. Yeah, and he was working in the uh, yeah that. I think oh, that's not him, right? These are oh. the ones that you sent me. I wanted to make sure that I'm not right. Too that particular job, we were coming from a fatal fire. I forget uh, what happened there. Uh, the guy that was riding with us. He was a priest from Pennsylvania, really nice man. And uh, he was just, you know, seeing how things are going with the forest service. And he took that shot and sent it to me. I think it was like, it was 1985, 86. Pretty salty there, like, guns. Mm, I would say. Cap, yeah. what, what do you think, like, what was the difference? I mean, you were in 120, for God's sakes, in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. How much more work? I was just going to ask that question, Rufus. How much question. more? It, what were you going to? Like, you've seen a big difference in the amount of work you were going to? Well, there was a difference because we were, that's all we went to was work. We didn't get elevated jobs. We didn't go to any, uh, you know, 1092s and stuff like that. When we went out the door, it was going into a pin job or we're going to or a, a, like a this. Job. Yeah. <laughs> that's Beirut. <laughs> Beirut. <laughs> this is hope. Yeah. We're burning the blocks out. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it was uh, different work because when we showed up to the job, Especially in Brownsville, bed -Stuy, those places like that, we didn't expect to go to work. All right. It's, you know, the, the company's there, which is top notch. Right, right, right. We're going right. to 112 first student. Nah, nah, we're just going to show up and say, <laughs> can we do anything for you? Can we sweep the floor or whatever? But we go to some, some, I tell you, I heard these, I heard stories that, yeah, some of these companies will leave the hose line for you. Nah, get the hell out of here. We went to a few jobs where they did. And I just, I, I couldn't believe it. But, uh, you know, it's, it, 
we went all the way down to Benson Harris. We went down to, uh, we had a dive job on Manhattan Beach where a guy was driving a, a, a Piper Cub pulling a hot dog stand. He ran out of gas, twirled <laughs> into the water, and we had to pull his body out. You know, it was the dive teams. And the dive teams, as I was Patty Trent, I used to uh, clean underneath uh, boats in Port Jeff Harbor, you know, a dollar a foot and making a couple of bucks. Uh, the one thing when you're in a dive team and you go underwater, you're done. No high rise fires, no nothing. You're done for the tour because of the smoke inhalation that you went down. I mean, we only went down like 40 feet, but yeah, we lost one guy <laughs> in training. We lost one guy that was killed feet. in training. His name was Dave. Uh, they were training up in New Jersey. He went down 115 feet and he knocked out. It was not for oh nice narcosis, but uh, the. Good uh, night. Huh? I was just saying good night. Yeah. The, uh, the, 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 the dive team, so I thought it was very impressive for the cops. I mean, they were just, you know, primo, and they trained all the time. And uh, once in a while, we run into them. We exchanged information back and forth because we used the argomas, the full face mace, and we had the bone mics so we could communicate to each other. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, that was a good experience working with the dive team. And uh, we had only a few jobs. I mean, if they got we got called to a dive job. It's basically for recovery. That was about it. But the main mm-hmm. emphasis behind the dive team was to, uh, back in the 30s and 40s when they built, they developed the dive teams, was to under under peer firefighting. And we used to train on like, these piers. And these piers are thick. I can see why they had us there, because we used to uh, shovel these uh, long uh, PVC pipes on floats to spray water underneath the piers. We'd drill on that. And it was kind of it was kind of a unique uh, situation. You said you worked with the Marine units. You worked with PD Aviation. So it was different. Because you don't do that normally from other companies. You stay right. to your own response area. We went basically citywide. A few high rise fires, and which was kind of weird. And we trained we trained with the, the birds picking us up at the Central Park and flying us over a couple of high rise where they would potentially drop us. And the cops said we would go in first. I go, why is that? Crowd control. Keep the people away from you folks when you come in on top of the roofs. So uh did a lot of good work in uh, with the SU uh, cops. No problems at all. That's funny. We used to say the same thing, Roof. The further we drive, even though you're driving further, like towards Long Island, the bigger piece yeah, of yeah. the you fire that we would get, we would, we would do more. We would just do more work. Well, those companies were spread out a little bit more, too, I think. You know, when you think about it, if, even though we're, we're going a long way, those companies were spread out. You know, even in, I'm sure, in, I don't know how close they are. They're not, they're not in South Brooklyn. They're not as close as they are, you know, in, you know, Bushwick or whatever, right? So, Well, you look at the map of Brooklyn. And uh, map of Brooklyn and Manhattan, you can see how the, the, the department evolved, where the population was. Most of Brooklyn and Queens are farmland, right? You know, and when you, uh, but I tell you, when I got promoted at the, the, the rescue two, I know I'm jumping a little ahead here. That's my all first, right. My first tour was in three thirteen. Yeah, <laughs> talk about in the middle of nowhere, right? I mean, there's a forest on the ground, the road, right? I show up. It's a Sunday morning. I'm all pumped up. And right across the apparatus floor is a bunch of ducklings going across. <laughs> Church bells are ringing, and there's the cemetery. That's right. It's like a forest over it's there. A, it's a right. bird sanctuary to the right. <laughs> the right. That's what I was talking yes. about. Yes, yeah, bird yeah. sanctuary. Yeah. And it goes where you go into Douglaston. So the guy's at the house watch, and I sign in, you know, Lieutenant Rotans and so on. The guy was, you know, he goes, oh, you must have came on a job with my grandson. Like, oh my god, <laughs> there was a lot of old timers there, yeah. A lot of old timers, I think yeah, the kid yeah. was 60 years old, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I go in the back, and uh, you know, the uh, the guy go, they go, We do house watch in the kitchen, that's fine with me, I don't, whatever you want to do. Why in Rome, yeah. So, uh, I'm looking at the, the, the book, and the book is saying that, uh, uh, how many runs they had, it was very, very low runs. So, like, one o'clock in the afternoon, at the nice little Italian lunch, you know, with the uh. Nice sausage and peppers and the bolognese, uh, uh, say chicken chill. pong. There you go. <laughs> so we get a run. He goes, I have three, uh, three, one, three, and one, six, and all these companies. So I get on a rig. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> so we get on a rig. Wait, you're driving. And, and drive, drive. And drive. <laughs> You're like, like are we in Nassau County? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Marathon Boulevard. Like, where are we going? So we pull up to the. We get a ranch, a uh, ranch house. We got two two windows for showing fire. So I call it. You know, I call the whole hands at arrival because I don't know how long these other companies are coming. By. <laughs> so the guy go to the. I go to the door. I pop the door. We're in your company, and I'm looking. This, they're coming, <laughs> and they finally get to the door. All right, turn turn the water on. Turn the water on. <laughs> right, so we go in, make a right, and they put out three rooms of fire. 
the guys are good. I hear the sore on top of the roof. You know, they they knock the fires down, and I'm looking around. You don't Oops, find sorry. anybody. I come outside the battalion chief goes, Where's your company? I go, <laughs> he's laughing. He goes, They walked home. I go, what? <laughs> They were calling a special agent company to pick up your host. They walk home. <coughs> you can't make it up. Wow. You really can't make it up. I so. think at that time, Cap, right? A lot of the old timers, when they were going out, right? When they were close to retirement or they wanted to just, if they worked in busy places, they would, they all came from Long Island most of the time. They would go out to those those houses out there and they would stay out there, right? And that, that was kind of like the retirement area. Some of those guys. Yeah, you well, know, they, like they were... The one guy told me, he goes, listen, you came out of rescue. I don't care if you came out of the slow company. You're young and stupid. We're old and stupid. Take it easy <laughs> on us. Fine with me. I'll just, I'll meet my bolognese, you know. That. But, uh, yeah, nice. but then about. I started covering, you know, I started covering rescue four. I started covering hazmat, you know, and uh, hazmat and 288. 288 was an company back then. And then I, uh, you know, I was working at night. I was working at the tour in 288 when uh, Tommy Williams was killed. You know, really? he, was, he was a great guy, yeah. It just, uh, like, but anyway, you know, getting back to rescue, uh, we learned a lot. All different tools, like the loud gun, you know, and uh, the uh, we working with the Hearst tool and all these other issues that uh, I enjoyed working with. You guys like working with the Hearst tool, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the training in when you can, I say. When did that happen? I don't know, it's just a picture I found. I'm like, oh, this is great for the Hearst tool. And you guys are cutting it up training. So I was like, all right. Cap, I wanted to ask you, Cap, when when you when it came time to get promoted, because you're only there a couple of years, right? In right. two? But did two did you half. want to take the promotion or did you have any, like you were taking the promotion or did you have I any downs? I was taking the like, promotion, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they got promoted with Jack Lee House and uh, you know, uh, Charlie Williams and a lot of good guys. Uh, Joey Pfeiffer uh, was on, on our, our on our class, Joey Smart guy. He's, like, he's on a job now as a commission deputy commissioner. Yeah, right. but uh, I uh, it was a, a good training program. Flips was great. We had guys from Rome and Buffalo and Albany that right. were uh, they used to call the uh, the Cowboys. And uh, I mean, the guys were just heartless. The FD and more guys were just heartless, but the guys upstate took it in stride. And they had this one fellow from Buffalo. And he had a lazy eye. They would go back and forth. And Are you looking just... at me? Oh, you looking exactly. At me? I mean, all all the cliches. They would just bust his chops. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Chief. <laughs> Until one day, we uh, were talking about a lot of duty deaths. All right. We were talking, you know, talking about Tolomundo, Fis Patrick Fisby. And then he gets up. And he had one of these, these old Southern drawers from Buffalo. So everybody's like, wait for this guy. He talked about the five guys that got killed in the propane explosion. And the way he described it with the chief with a piece of two by four in his neck, the whole bit, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Mm, sure. That night, we all got drunk with the guys in Buffalo. Okay. It was just a, I mean, it was a learning process that no matter where you are, I don't care what you're in uh, Roanoke or you're in Seattle, you're on the job. You no know, doubt. and, uh, you know, yeah. a friend of mine, uh, Rick Duran, uh, he was in Rescue Four, we were talking firemen together. Uh, his son went down, I forget where, in, I think Charleston, uh, North Carolina, or something like that. He did this mutual swap with a guy so he could take his uh, medical up here in the city. Well, that day he's taking the medical, nine guys in his firehouse in Charleston. Oh, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the uh, oh, collapse yeah. of the, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that was, a, but uh, you know, just never know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, Patty Brown and Ray Trinkle, they did swaps, you know, yeah. a lot of three. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, come out of rescue. And uh, working rescue was a. Was a so let me put this up. That accident was uh, with one one eleven. Jimmy Bates got thrown out of the rig. Really? That's what one of them said. Yep. CFD. Are they talking about the South uh, Carolina? Right. Yeah, right. Oh. Okay. Wow. No, I yeah. And then, about, and then uh, I, I covered around. You know, as lieutenant, and then. Uh, I, Where'd you I, get I, assigned to the which division? The fourteenth. Fourteenth division. Maybe. Yeah, and uh, but prior to that, you know. Before I came out of job, I went to my associate's degree in nursing and fire engineering at Suffolk. And Cassie Beery was one of my instructors. And Joe Galvin, Joe and Joe Galvin. And wow. uh, when I came on the job, uh, Cassie Beery was uh, the division chief. And uh, we, we, hit, we hit it off real fast. So he goes, listen, I'm going to put you to work. Said, okay. And at that year, when I came on a job, I, uh, the following year, I get with the 289 because I liked engine work. And so I uh, went to the captain, Jimmy Spillane, whose brother was a captain of 102 at the time when I was there. He, him as a guy goes, hey, kid, you want to come to an engine company? I go, I can't. I don't trust anybody. I want to make sure the line goes in. 
So uh, he goes, you got it. And uh, there was an old fella in the kitchen with a, a, a brown bag lunch that was there every day. It was, like a, it was a retiree. And uh, I introduced myself to him. And the captain goes, that's a good guy. Okay. He would say it five times. That's a good guy. So he, so he brings me upstairs to the office. He goes, look at that picture. Oh, it's JFK from PT-109. He was the pilot? You know, things uh, of that. Yeah. So it was, uh, it used to be people like that. There were so historical uh, prominence about him. But I went to 29 the Tigers. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Not for nothing. <laughs> Not for nothing. The biggest group of men I've ever even seen the less work with. Yeah. They got, they always had big guys over there. Yeah. They Mark Matilda said, Jimmy Fear on six foot five. You know, they had a gym upstairs that worth ten thousand dollars, and uh, they worked with guys like Marshall Glenn. So we had this one guy who used to call him Guns, Chris Revere. He got like arms out to here, you know, and they're, they're just good guys. And uh, it, we did a lot of we did some work, you know. Big area, right? Huge area. Huge area. Huge. Yes, yes. Huge, and huge. Uh, running around a lot, pull boxes, all that stuff. You had a ton of pull boxes. But I think I was there maybe four months, <laughs> and I'm in the engine. And we get a, a, a pool box. Okay, what else is new? But it was like three blocks away. I go, I could smell it. And we went down two blocks. I think it was on maybe 37th Avenue. I mean, pull in. Is this Queen Queen Anne is roaring like a bastard. The exposure for Queen Anne is starting to go. So I transmitted a second alarm at arrival. And, uh, you know, the, I had three probies on the line. And a, but a guy with one year driving. And I had one senior oh man with the God. nozzle who had one year. How many parts with the spirit of Santi? <laughs> the, the kids did a great job. They did a really great nice. job. Knocked the fire out. And I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember this one, but uh, two star chief. And uh, he comes, he goes, Come here, Lieutenant. I go, You called in a second alarm on arrival? Well, this is what I had, Chief. I mean, went to a third alarm plus. I'm like, He's busting my chops because oh, I just wanted to make sure. I go, Look, Chief, this is what I had. I go, Can you do me a favor, Chief? And he turned around and goes, Wow, what do you want? I go, I had these four, these four probies. The first fight, they did a great job. That's their effing job. And he walked away. Oh, my God. But you had like Big Vitaly Battalion Chief, Martin was Battalion mm -hmm. Chief. They had really good Battalion Chiefs in the 4 6. And uh, you had Kenny, I think Kenny Memmott was working in uh, 136 at one time. Yeah, well, Kenny Memmott was a fireman in the 176 truck. And uh, my first night detail, going back to 120 a little bit, they go, You're going to 176 truck. Okay, where's that? You can probably walk to the, to the firehouse. So I go in there and I open the door to 176. And I go, all right, this is not good. The house watch is pitch black. The guy at the house watch goes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Naked. <laughs> Naked. So, uh, and, I, uh, so I go, uh, and I got all these glow stars in the ceiling. You can't make this up. You really can't make it up. And uh, oh. he goes, all right. So I signed the book and I opened the door and it's Billy Bresson. He's urinating on a tire. It's not urine, but, you know, I think he's like, he grabs my hand. Hi, how are you doing? What is going on? Well, it gets better. I go to the truck office. I do a truck, you know, the lieutenant, the Richard Rotans. He throws me the radio because you got the roof. Okay. It's my first. You got the roof. You got you, you hit Fred Heights. And Louis Orgear was working that night. Louis Orgear is like, you know, the super comedian. I go to the kitchen door. There's a safe lock on it. I go, what the? I'm trying. Like, I hear, blah, 22, 42, 3. It's a guy hanging upside down, dressed as Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> what is well, going on over there? I, I open the door, and there's this guy. Uh, I think his name is Washington. Big, strapping uh, African-American guy. He's dressed in a KK outfit, whipping white guys with a whip. Oh, my God. <laughs> God, and there's a snake going through the floor. Oh, they, they always had, had all the animals over there. They had a piranha in the fish tank dropping they had mice. Chinchilla. In it. They had everything over there. Oh my God, it's, 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 it was a great company to work with. It really is. And then after, so they go, <laughs> yeah, I could, yeah, I want to so go the, there. Ne the next day. I'm doing that goes on today too, Captain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that goes on today. They uh, they give they, they say uh, you stay in there for the, for the day tour. So okay, fine. So they give me the OV. They still had the phone booths on the rigs. I remember the phone booth on the, on the, rear, the rear mounts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. We're coming back for a run. And someone said, Kenny Bevan, they're stealing your car. So I'm in the phone booth getting my rig. And all of a sudden we stopped moving. I go, I guess you got another run. No, he's just driving, chasing the criminal that stole his car. We finally got, he pulls around the Eastern Parkway, runs into his car, and got the guy. Like, you, gotta, it's, you can't make this shit up. You cannot make that up. The ghetto. Yeah, the ghetto. And he married a Playboy bunny. Beautiful girl. 
You can't make that up either. No, no. <laughs> he ain't lying. But he fast forward, you know, going back to uh, to eighty nine. I mean, these guys are they're good firemen. They they were everybody's always eating good, so to speak. Uh, when Captain Spillane retired, he wanted his favorite meal, meatloaf. So the guys made him a huge meatloaf in the shape of a. We want it now, <laughs> the meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> and then him and uh, 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 Boyle, Fat Boyle, uh, he was a captain in the uh, Fire Vision, I think it was. They had a, a retirement dinner for him over at the uh, Elks Club. And they bought 10, 15 foot heroes that they made heroes out of. And one of them was peanut butter and jelly because that's what Spillane liked. PBJ, so, uh, baby. PBJ, yeah. And it, it, was, it was good. It was good. And everybody was studying. Frankie Johnston, uh, we, we in Rescue 2 together, he was in a truck company. I uh, came home from vacation and the place was too quiet. I go, no, this is not good. I go upstairs. I open up my locker. Now you heard, you've heard matchsticks, right? Rubbing against the flint. Roman candles, cherry bombs. <laughs> this, this, all those little, little, little. I dove into my room underneath the underneath the bunk and they drilled a hole waiting for me. And he fired more shit underneath there. And uh, <laughs> it, what can I tell you? You know, we uh, had the brothers, how, yeah. The brothers. How, lo how long were you over there in 289? Well, I was in 289 for a couple of years. I They sent me over to 288 because one of the lieutenants died playing uh -huh. tennis, I think it was. You know, I covered there for just a couple of spots because uh, what was the captain's name? Connolly? Anyway, he was afraid of birds. <laughs> and I hear some scream, some falcon came into his window. He's, ah! So I think <laughs> Chase that out. But, uh, Man up. I, Man, yeah, but uh, he just recently passed, Artie Conley. He was uh, one of the guys in the probate school as a lieutenant. Uh, but I went back to 289, and uh, then when I was in 288, that was when uh, uh, Tommy Williams was killed. But the guys in Hazmat, great bunch of guys, really great bunch of guys. In fact, right in the journal, guy comes into the firehouse with his, like, a five-year-old kid. He goes, can we see the firehouse? Yeah, come on in. So I'd show the kid the rig, give him the coloring books, the plastic hat, the whole bit, and... Uh, um, did I work with Steve, Chief Steve? I think, was, I think he was out of 138 already. He was promoted. No, he was there for just briefly. Oh, was just, he? Just briefly. I think maybe two, one or two months. All right. But then yeah. he became a battalion chief when I was, you know, covering. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yes. Great guy, Steve. Uh, but this guy, so he, as he's walking away, he's taking his, his son, right? He goes, that's why you should go to school. And I'm like, excuse me. I'm thinking to myself. It's like, wait a minute. Wait. Let me get the guy's. Come down and say hello. So the guys come down. They tell everybody, I, I do the chemicals. I try the rig. I do this and that. I go, all right, but on the outside, what do you guys do? One guy's going to medical school. Three guys own a, a, a law firm. Two guys are working in a, a, a <laughs> marine and whatnot. I go, that's why you should go to school. That's why I should go yeah, to school. Yeah. Don't listen to this guy over here. Yeah. Yeah, the one but, guy became a chiropractor from uh, Hazmat. A what? A chiropractor. The one guy became a chiropractor from Hazmat. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's unfortunate that that company lost 21 guys. Yeah. That, was a, that was a shame. But then in the 93, I, uh, well, when I was lieutenant, guess if you wanted me to take out, check out uh, Shea Stadium and Yankee Stadium because there was a lot of disasters going around. They had a, a major fire in the uh, soccer stadium where 60 some people were killed. They had the, these people running into each other in uh, Brazil. And uh, you know, I did some work with that. And then he goes, all right, you're going to take care of the Steel Wheels concert. Goes, what the hell is that? That's, you know, this Rolling Stones. And That's, a gig. This. That's it's a, a good, gig. <laughs> it's a good but gig. <laughs> I'm there on this on the stage behind a black curtain, and my counterpart from ESU is there. And uh, we had to brief the the, uh, the celebrities of what they do in case this. And uh, let me tell you something. Mick Jagger was asking pointed questions. Great guy. And uh, he said, okay, thank you very much. Very polite, very pleasant. And then the following year, we did the Elton John and Eric Clapton. And uh, they too, Elton John was kind of stiff, but uh, it was very interesting to see you're behind the curtain. And when Eric Clatton started doing this, you know, da, 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 85,000 people screaming at you. I, I can see why these guys want to be on high on drugs all the time. It's it wild. <laughs> it must be crazy, huh? It was a, it was a good experience. Oh, yeah. yeah, on the big clock too, you know, Ruff? On the yeah, street, yeah. You know, so. Everybody needs a gig. Everybody That's needs right. A gig. You found yours. And then I got promoted in 93. I got on the job in 93, Cap. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> what am I going to do with these guys, Chief? Huh? Uh, <laughs> What'd you get on, Scoops? 95. Last oh. week. 
Bops. <laughs> That's my Bob, Cap. Yeah, I, I get promoted to uh, the captain, and uh, Jack McCormick had me do a couple of you know things for him. And then he goes, "You're going to open up 294 engine." I says, "Okay, fine." He goes, "And uh, you got to you're going to be the only captain of the job that goes to community uh, meetings." Okay, so I went there and uh, I called up Von Essen, who was the union president at the time, right, before he became a commissioner. And I said, listen, is there any uh, protocol you want to go bring guys over here? Because now nah, you call them up, you go pick your only guys you want. And I did. And uh, I picked how, how long have they been closed? Yeah. Howie Carlson closed them under Dinkins. I think it was in 1990. And I opened them up in uh, February of 94. Two of 94 for 294 engine. Two of 94 for 94 engine. Right. Wow. So Howie Carlson, God rest his soul. He was a lieutenant in 120 when I was there. He was one funny bastard. And uh, he was very good. His son came on the job, eventually, yep. also. Yeah, yeah. He did? Yep. Yeah, we had him on the show. We yeah, he's a good guy. Him. And uh, they, they all live in Richmond Hill. And uh, so when I opened up the firehouse, I, uh, you know, I had uh, the community people come in and out, you know, as, you know, supporting us and so on. And I had a good bunch of guys with the engine company. And then uh, I, uh, I was just finishing my second master's degree over at John Jay. And Steve King goes. Like how you saw that, didn't you? Huh? I like how you said that in there. Second master's degree. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to okay. slip it through there, right? Uh, <laughs> second master's degree. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, uh, I wonder what the safety command was Steve King. And Pete Hayden was just transitioning. Steve King went in there. And that was a very interesting uh, place to work with. We were at Livingston Street first. And then we went over to uh, Nine Metro Tech. And, uh, you know, Pete Cancy was the chief of the department, you know, uh, Vanessa was uh, the commissioner, and it was uh, quite an experience, you know, going to all these meetings with all the big cheese, learning what's going on behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, we had, uh, what's the guy's name, Rescue Four? They used to call him Sniper. He was killed. Uh, but uh, we had, these cheese were so smart. They're very, oh, very McLaughlin? smart. McLaughlin? Was that McLaughlin? Yeah, that, that McLaughlin, yeah. yeah. And you had, uh, you know, we only went down to uh, one safety command. They took away the second one, and they were working out of... Uh, at Randall's Island, and uh, the guy who took my spot, Mitchie Bavone, he uh, became my executive officer for safety. But it was it was it was, it was good. And then, uh, you know, my time was up, and I went over to a small stint over in '65 and '65 uh, engine. I walk in the quarters, and I'm signing my name, Captain Rotans. And the guy goes, "Woo!" I go, "What do you woo?" He goes, "The first captain in 1998. This is like you know, 100 years prior to that was Captain Rodan." I'm, okay. And they used to live on the third floor because captains and the families on up they used to live in firehouses. And they had a nice spiral staircase, a staircase going up. He goes, You know why we have spiral staircases in these firehouses? I had no idea. He goes, Horses. The horses, right? So because if they would go straight up the stairs, they couldn't get them down. And the office in that 65 engine was gorgeous. Had a working fireplace. Had a veranda looking over 43rd Avenue. 41st Street. I've never Street. been in that firehouse and I have heard. That that is the wait a minute. You were there. You never got. We used to get detail. I never there went on, there. on New Year's Eve all the time. I no? never went there. No. Nope. They used to send the squad to sixty-five engine every New Year's Eve until after, after the ball dropped. Really great firehouse, man. Well, yeah. it, was, it was a good bunch of guys, and a lot of guys worked the theaters. You know, behind us, behind the curtains, in case a fire would occur, they would pull the you know the curtains drop down a whole bit. Some of the guys had tuxedos working in certain places, and. uh that one particular night going into 2000, we had uh, the command post. Nick Visconti, uh, the chief in charge of the FBI, police chief, sanitation chief. We had all these, you know, like big wigs and so on. So, uh, and the veranda overlooked, you know, 43rd Street. So I told one of the probies, I go, get your tuxedos on, put your towel over your arm, go downstairs and ask all the chiefs that the committee commander wants your uh, attendance upstairs. So Visconti figures out what's going on. They came upstairs. I had my white robe and a, and a ascot. I had a Grand Marnier and a cigar. Fireplace is going. I go, gentlemen, have a drink. And the chief of police goes, you effing fireman. You really got the job. Jealousy will get you everywhere. And Nick Viscotti goes, and Moreto, I'm in. So, uh, it was, uh, Allegedly. He was, yeah. he was a super nice guy, Visconti, right? Oh, he was just uh, he's a gentleman. Yeah. He really was. And he's the guy that was a captain, covering captain of 120 truck, and I came in with my snow sweater. Yeah. He goes, out. It's called but, uh, teddy bear or something like that. Oh, right? God. On the, yeah. I took that thing off and left it in the firehouse. And burned and, uh, it. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was uh, a nice firehouse. Uh, we didn't do that many mm -hmm. runs. We had the Coca-Cola fire. 
But uh, mm-hmm. the one area I thought was very dangerous was the uh, Diamond District because they had vast of assets and uh, all these other bases that they would clean their uh, jewelry or whatnot. So uh, to be very careful as you move a hand line in the place. And uh, it was, it was every, all security. So if you went into a building, you're about to make sure that everything that you do is chock solid because of the, uh, the security they had. And then we had Rockville Center, you know, and, uh, you know, we all those response areas, which we would be an injured company down there all the time when they do the tree. Right. So uh, it was all good, all good stuff. Really enjoyed it. It's like a bizarro world, though, right? Working in Manhattan, like in a spot like that, compared to where you are, right? It's like it's apples and oranges. It's totally well, you know, what's bizarre about it is that the public assembly. I mean, you have these theaters that are just huge. I mean, how, how do you operate in these things? They did the high rise fires, and I ABC'd a lot. Uh, I like that. There was I had you know ABC in the second and the fourth and the eighth, and uh, I had a good time doing that. I had one job in a high rise, and uh, I thought it was pretty cool. But uh, very, very few fires, but the fires he got, I mean, just yeah, as I got out. there, uh, I think if, uh, not too long before I got there, they had a, a sub cellar fire. Oh, 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 doing there they should have just oh. stayed off the ship but that's yeah. now hindsight 50 50 2020 but i uh, had that uh, going there was pretty good and then, uh, then one day i had a guy stop over he goes uh camera tans he goes yeah john on i go how you doing john he was you know he was an inspector with the, the pd I go what did i do he goes monday you're reporting for duty with richie Shear. you're going to be deputy director for oem okay so that's how i got to oem and uh, richie Shear saw, saw all my reports and research I was doing on stadiums and also about GIS systems and communications. He goes, you're coming in to become a deputy commissioner. And that's how I got there in uh, 2002. Great did, you have, did you retire from the job? Like, how did that? No, 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 no you're no. detailed. Everybody yeah. that was there was detailed. Oh, shit. You know, except for like guys like Harry, uh, Henry Jackson, and a few other people that uh, worked there. But 90% of the people were detailed from EMS, sanitation police, fire, uh, PD, and so on. I don't know how that worked. Yeah, uh, Pete Piccarello was a sergeant with PD, probably one of the smartest guys in emergency management. Great guy. You had uh, Liz Davis, Andy Grunewald, some of these women there were just brilliant. And, uh, you know, they, they bring me into this room, there's about 20 of my staff there, and uh, they're all like, who's this knucklehead? I go, folks, I may have my degrees and all that stuff, may be around the fire service, but you are the most smartest people in the country. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. I go, my vo- my motto is, is that if you can't take care of grandma that has an, an O2 respirator in a wheelchair, they ain't doing that job. I thought Liz Davis was going to come up and give you the biggest kiss. and uh, But I treated the staff, you know, because now I'm dealing with civilians. That was a big change, you know, and uh, even though there's fire, police, and so on, the majority were civilians that were expert in the fields. And it was, uh, you know, they had the EOC, and it was uh, a good experience, very good experience, because I was now have to be, Chief editor of all their plans, which was a lot of them. Then you were working five days a week. Working five days a week. Yeah. All right, I would I would have citywide occasionally, and I they assigned to me this uh, uh, sergeant from PD, Rick Bielicki, and we became close friends. The guy was just phenomenal. I would meet him in Seaford, uh, not Seaford, uh, on the side of the expressway, and uh, he would drive in, and we'd go in together. And he's just an outstanding guy, and. Uh, in fact, I was talking to him today, so he uh, he was my exec. And uh, on the way back home, he says, are you tired yet? I go, what do you mean? He goes, go to sleep. So I go to put the chair back down, and he would zip through all the traffic and whatnot until he got stopped by highway cop, and he was showing the sergeant's bed. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Just kept on going. But uh, great guy. really is. And it, yeah, a lot of nice people. There. Terry Winters from EMS was, was there, you know, uh, uh, just uh, I just miss them all. But, you know, you move on. You like doing that work? Well, I left when I got retired. I created an agency for emergency management, and they created graduate degree programs. You know, so uh, I, I, it's I really enjoy emergency management, and I had a good time there. And unfortunately, we were there when we got whacked at the, at the World Trade Center during 9-11. That was a nightmare in itself. So you were after you retired. What what makes you want to retire though after two two more years? Any reason? Well, when I was in uh, after you know, the nine eleven uh, disaster, I don't want to go into that. We can do that, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the new uh, mayors had their own people come in and then they went back to headquarters. So I worked under Pete Hayden and a few of the chiefs doing the uh, McKinsey report. 
and contributions to the 9-11 commission. And uh, we did that. And then one day I got a phone call from a deputy, uh, first deputy executive in Nassau County. But he goes, can you stop by West Street? And I thought he was talking about West Street downtown. I go, I got to turn around. He goes, no, to West Street, Nassau. And so this guy, Tony Cancellari, who was a retired NYPD lieutenant, we started talking. He goes, we, we had to recommend it by a lot of people to uh, start our agency. I go, and what? He goes, emergency management. Sure. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. As long as I get the backing from the county executive. He goes, let's go meet him. I go, who is he? <laughs> I didn't know it was Tom Swazi because, you know, I was so busy with the 9-11 issues. And so he gave me the job. When can you start? I go, about uh, next month. And we get finished with all my uh, stuff at his job. And I created the, the agency in 2002. Wow. And well, Cap, bring me up to speed. What 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 were you doing at that? Like, what do you what do you do there when that's happening? What do you what, setting the, up in Nassau County? Well, yeah. you know, I had to first of all, I had to go through the uh, legislative body to get approved. All right, that was one of the big hurdles because you had the Republicans and the Democrats, and the Republicans were mm. uh, nine, the Democrats were ten, and uh, they were busting my chops. And uh, one guy says, "Well, you, you Democrats are all the same." I go, "I'm not a Democrat. I, I, I'm an independent." I, what are you talking about? I go, why are you guys fighting the devs? They go, New York, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, they all got emergency management now in the city. But why are you fighting this? It's dumb. But then so we got they, they finally approved. And then I had to bring in staff. And Rick Bilek, who was my guy from New York City, oh yeah, he was my first deputy. Greg Karanier and Jerry Winters. I had people that had a lot of experience. They brought in as staff. And then they uh, we uh, had a facility at the the jail downstairs. They had a fifty five hundred square foot facility at the jail. And this guy, uh, Riley said, You got it, it's yours. So we had the brick and mortar. We had the first EOC. We started doing our plans. We started training. Anything that was involved, it just took a lot of work in those four years. We got it up and running. And uh, it was good. It was uh, a good experience. You know, I'm glad. I mean, how often can you say that you created a government agency? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. very, very <laughs> no. No, well, that's one of the things you talk about the money. You know, all can decide. No, no, all can decide, Chief. Is that. Uh, I had to get grants, yeah, yeah, emergency management grants. I had uh, <clears throat> FEMA grants and funds. So the first year, all my salaries were paid for, you know, and uh, I didn't need any money for the uh, facility, but I, I that money to, uh, from the state centers would give me 150K here, 150K here. So the first two years, I was not too hurting for, for the cash. And then eventually the budget starts coming, and then you have to work with that. So uh, there's a lot of challenges, budget, staff, brick and mortars, EOC, plans. We created the Nassau County's first emergency operation plan. Now, according to the Disaster Act, Article 2B, we have to submit all emergency managers have to submit their plans every December. So December 2003, we submitted our first plan. I get a phone call from state emergency management. Hey, uh, the commission, we got this plan for us. Yeah, what do you think? Well, what do you want us to do with it? <laughs> I tell you guys are supposed to get it every year. We do? <laughs> so, anyway, it's, uh, it is what it is. But uh, did you have Did you have like a cache of tool like were you doing any of that stuff or who had that stuff for for nassau county like who would have that if if you were if you had an emergency who were you going to you just you're just setting up the pd and all that is that what, well, you're what, doing? what we did was at the emergency operations center all right well, I, terry winters was one of the guys he would call all the agencies and find out what do you got what's your skill sets what's your equipment and i call i sat up i had a meeting with with the guy that was the uh the commissioner for uh nassau county property you know all the buildings and whatnot He's kind of choking around. He goes, what do you want me for? I go, you have buildings. Yeah. I go, well, in case you have disaster, where am I going to stockpile my medicine? Where am I going to stockpile my equipment? Oh. So they, there was a learning process for a lot of people, and uh, it worked out good. I had a couple of people in the fire service and the police service. They cut slightly because they felt they should be the commissioner. But I think Tom brought me in because I was an outsider, and I had no connectivities to Nassau County. So, uh, And he was uh, – he was, a, he was a good guy to work for, you know, as a county executive. Now he's a, a, a congressman and so on, you know. Mm. And uh, I worked with a few legislators like uh, old man Gano. He's doing time upstate. But, uh, you know. Can you read that there, Cap? Hank M. Ask Hank. It was difficult to set up emergency procedures since all fire departments are volunteer. No, it wasn't. You no. Know, what, what it was is that when we set up the plans, right, for, say, a coastal storm for, uh, for a hurricane or for blackouts, I would bring in the fire commission and then tell all these fellas, this is what, these are our plans. What do you think? All right. What operate, what can you be doing during a hurricane or a blackout or a case? Maybe and we had the H1N1, uh, oh. the debacle when we had to give out the medications. We did that at Nassau County community college. 
But the volunteers, they, they, you know, it was like 64 volunteer fire departments, I think it was. Wow. You know, 25 police departments. Yeah, two cities, Gardens, uh, Long Beach and Glen Cove. So it was like a mini state of like 1.6 million people. So I, you know, with the, with the volunteers, being I was a volunteer, they knew what I, I knew the jargon. So it, it was pretty good. They uh, they got a couple of plans and they, it worked out pretty well, especially with the two tall trees, the guys McGuire's from Freeport. They were they were pretty good. <laughs> two tall trees. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. We, I we usually see Ray at the yeah. He's, right? he's, we see him every show. You can't miss him as soon as he's walking down the hall. Like, oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, that's actually small, that's Hank's brother-in-law. Small hands. Yeah, small hands. <laughs> he's got. <laughs> I hate shaking that guy's hand. Yeah, yeah. seventy-two so, departments. Hank M. Thank you. I, I stand corrected. I think it was 70, 64 villages. I you know it's been since two thousand six that I left. Mm, I went yeah. to Delphi. Hank Mole is one of uh, the senior guys. All right. Oh, yeah? so you le- he was in your probie class. That's what I said. Um, okay, right, right. So you left in 2006. Right. right? And then you went to Adelphi. Correct. Uh, and that's when you made an OEM management program? The we well, well, How it started was that we did a drill on a, a POD, how, how fast we give out medications. So they used the school of nursing to be victims to give medications. So the, the provost, Marshall Wells, Dr. Marshall Wells said, listen, can you make a class or two for us? Go, how about if I do a whole graduate degree program? And that's what I did. I did a master's degree in emergency management. And it uh, worked out well. And I did it for two years. And then this one fellow, Camarelli, you know, I would meet him once in a while. He goes, I'm going to build this research facility in Bethpage called the Applied Science Center. Can you give me a hand? So I co-designed the place. For, and it was, it was not, I wouldn't call it the spooks, but we had a lot of classified areas in the facility. And we had what's called SCIFs, Secure Communication Information Facilities. And uh, we had a, a lecture room of 150 chairs and seats that I could convert into an EOC in 20 minutes. So that we had uh, satellite communications, we had communications that weren't even on the, on the field yet. And uh, you know, we had a lot of uh, people from the academia, the agencies, uh, the FBI was there a lot. In fact, the FBI barred my facility when they had the Gilgo murders back then in 2012 when they first started finding these people. And uh, I gave the keys to the place. I go, here's a skiff, here's a lock combination, and just you know, go, go to town. Two weeks later, they came back, goes, here you go, director, we, uh, we can't stay anymore. What are you talking about? Uh, some guy with a Chief Burke chases out of there. <laughs> I said, okay. And we found out later on all about that, that guy. Mm. But uh, it was a great facility. And then Nassau County OEM moved into that facility you know, with Jim Callahan. Because when I left OEM in uh, 2006, I asked Jim Callahan, can you take my spot? Because he was an attorney. Specialized in emergency management law. He was also emergency manager in Malvern. And uh, he was a pretty sharp guy. But unfortunately, he died of cancer a few years after that. Oh. And then the following guy, this guy, uh, Craig Kraft, he took his spot. And he died of cancer after that. I go, what, did I leave a bug or something? <laughs> so there's another guy after that was Morelli. And it's another guy I did now. So uh, it's uh, – but the, the, the Applied Science Foundation was a great place to work. We, uh, we uh, managed the Hurricane Lee – and Hurricane Sandy out of that place. And That's FEMA crazy. worked in yeah, it was. And FEMA came there and goes, Where can we put our facility? I go, take the uh the auditorium. That's what it's made for. And they were like, You're kidding me. They were like in seventh heaven. We fed them, they had bunks the whole bit. So they were there for the duration. The logistics of all of that is like incredible. Until you're doing that, it's really just insane. Well, you know, being that I the, the facility was my responsibility and the logistics was for my end from Nassau County, they were just elated that they had a connection to right. the county. And then that every other day we would have both county executives. We had uh, uh, the Homeland Security uh, Director, uh, what was they, her name? I forget her name right now. She came up, the two governors, uh, Governor uh, of New York, Governor of New Jersey, they were there. Uh, uh, Mary Cuomo was there. And uh, I'm there in my office there. And I'm, I'm the, the big time I had these waste of having a little exercise there. He walks by and goes, hey, nice weights you got there. Hey, come on in. We're sitting there having a cup of coffee about an hour. People look at her. Where's the governor? Where's the governor? So uh, sitting there with uh, Governor Cuomo. At the time, nice guy. You know, you know, was, uh, he just was down there to support what was going on with the two county executives in mm. the city. And uh, it was good. <clears throat> you know, then, then they eventually had to close the place down because they uh, had the, uh, the financial crunch. The guy that started the place died. And uh, North of Grumman moved out. That was our anchor tenant. So they, they eventually closed the place. And then from there, I went over to uh, Department of Health over in uh, in Queens, New York City Department of Health. Oh, it's in Jackson Heights. Started where you began. 
Jack uh, rides home. Yeah, right. It was on. Uh, it was like right at the foot of the Queensborough Bridge. Oh, I thought it was. Uh, there's another one, Department of Health. Uh... Yes, there's, they're all over the city, but this was the main headquarters. Oh, and, okay. uh, I was working on a program called uh, Post Emergency Canvassing Operations, PICO, and uh, very smart people, very smart people, and they were very good with the incident command system. That's you know, they were very <clears> very <throat> class people. You know, I mean, you know, you bless my chest, but the PhD, everybody there had PhDs, and you would never know. Hey, Rich, just go downstairs, have a burger, and a couple of beers. You know, you were just natural, natural guys and girls. You know, they were very smart. You mean it wasn't like doctor, 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 <laughs> doctor? No, no one no? said that. No one ah, said that. <laughs> and then I would, I would go into the, the briefing room, and there's this one girl, Francois. She's up of there course. with advanced, <laughs> advanced statistics. Telling us how fast we would move these medications, whatever. And like, okay, my first graduate degree was in holy shit, I remember this shit. You know, all this mathematics that we were talking about, they uh they're, they're just they were just good. They really were. You know, a little story with uh 9-11 after uh when I was managing the EOC over at P92. And the reason why we got P92 because of uh we were going to do a drill there on September 12th, how fast we give out medication. Richie Shear goes, I want you to go down to the landfill and see uh, how things are going. So I go down to the landfill in Staten Island. And I go to this butler building. And I go in. I thought I was walking into the, uh, the, the screen set of Sopranos. I mean, there's Pussy, there's Tony, the whole bit. And they got all this mathematical equations on the board. Hey, what about this true is this, this hero? About Double this every goddamn equation. How fast we get? Like, this guy is insane. But uh, I was very impressed by sanitation. Sanitation police, the sheriff, great agencies. They couldn't do enough for you, you know. It, uh, but the, the 9 11 issue that uh, bad time really was bad time. You know, we were in Tower Seven when we got hit, you know. And, wow, uh, yeah. At, in fact, uh, I thought my two sons, Richie and Danny, were there. They were looking for me, they were told I was wiped out and vice versa. And we finally met each other on Western Vesti. Yeah, these two guys, and Danny on the left, he goes, uh, Damn, we should go home. I think mom's worried. I go, You think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they were at the scene. I too. think I know of Rich. I don't know how where I, if he was in one seventy. He, you said he was one seventy six, Rich. One seventy six, and they did a lot of covering in one fifty four. Uh, I have. That's why I have to know him. Yeah, and Danny was in two ninety nine before he became a lieutenant over in uh, the caveman over thirty five. He should be promoted to captain any day now. You know, and uh, yeah, the other guy's captain of one thirty six. Yeah, and they uh, they teased my one son Michael, who uh, was a uh, that's that's Richie and me. Um, that's wow. in 1985. You know, I, I have a Captain picture. Now, but... <laughs> I, I have a picture of him being held by Georgie Guinan in 120. Georgie Guinan is holding him up, and then later on, Georgie Guinan was a lieutenant in uh, 176. 176. I tell you right now, it's one of the toughest guys I've ever met. I think Georgie. Yeah, man. Yeah, his father was a uh, lieutenant 231, and his grandfather was on a job too. You know, so they come from a big family. His, his son, I think, is ready to retire. I think his son is over in City Island. Yeah, you know, but uh, great, great guy, and uh, and, uh, Georgie's still recovering from the cancer, he's doing good. In fact, I was talking to him today. I still get him on there if he feels good, yeah. But we got to get Jay, Dr. Jay. Jay. Here's the big question when you left the fire department, did the name Dr. Dick travel with you or did it stay (laughs) in the fire department? (laughs) When I went to OEM in in, uh, in Nassau County. Some of the guys are on the job. You want to go to the meetings? Hey, it's oh, yeah, Dr. Dick. Ah. <laughs> you you got to take the good with the bad. You know, it's uh, you and they, even out here in the island, and, and, the, and the volunteers, they, they bust my chops That's about it. That's all right. Come on, man. Come on, now, what's man. The, what's, the, what's the the Rotance and Associates? That's the, the uh, that's my consulting firm. I do some consulting. I was doing a few com- uh, companies on business continuity. Yeah, yeah, I wish. You know, it's uh, it's just Show me the money! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, God, he's like leaning back. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you that's gotta love the me. <laughs> Sorry, you that's too loud. Love Apple, my heart. He's God. got fourteen no, kids brand new. crying out loud, bro. Now he's got to make the money, right? You got fourteen. You have to, to keep up with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm, 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 it's a slowly but surely. I'm doing some work here and there. It uh, it drips and drips, but it keeps. How, how many kids you got? You got fourteen. Fourteen. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, my uh, my wife God and I. Bless. My wife, uh, her husband died when she was pregnant with her ninth, uh, when she was thirty nine years old, and then we met later on in uh, nineteen ninety six. I had my three and her nine, 
we get married. It was great. I mean, she's a doll. She's phenomenal. My kids went to school with her kids. So, and I lost my dad. They lost their dad. So that, that connectivity there, right. they knew I was sympathetic to what's going right, on. Right, right, right. And then uh, after our three-day honeymoon in the city, we took all 12 kids down to Disney World. But when I was in safety command at the time, this guy Owens, this is another captain, great guy. He goes, you going to Disney World? I'll be right back. Okay. Two hours later on, he goes, "You, my, my brother was an executive in Disneyland. He goes, he's sending you 20 tickets. Wow. You know? Ooh. So I, and all I needed was like about, well, it's 14 of us at the time. I needed uh, eight more tickets. Now, my two sons, my stepson, my other son, Richie and Mike, they went back to Disney World where we were at the hotel. I go, just be back by 12 o'clock. I look out the window at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I see these two knuckleheads climbing up the trellis into their uh, into their hotel rooms. <laughs> so I eventually go over there, and I, I see him. I go, guys, we're going to the beach. Out of the, the, uh, the blanket, Richie hands me another stack of tickets. They met a couple of girls that were leaving, and they got their tickets. They didn't spend a dime at Disney World. Had had to do it. Hey, it was great. You know, we had a good time at Disney World. You know, what, what are the age ranges from what to what? The twins will be 22 in August, and the oldest one's going to be 48. How many uh, grandbabies? You got to have like a gazillion grandbabies. Number 16 is coming next month. Woo! Wow. Congratulations. Good for yeah. you. Yeah, very it, nice. Uh, they're breeding. You they, know, do and, uh, they do that. They do that. And I got a few more to, so that we get that we get married. So I, I told Trish, I go, listen, if they all get married and have three kids, that's 42 grandkids. You know, and all the kids, that's 72 people at the dinner table. Yeah, wow. you gotta, Kevin you knows that. Of, yeah. I know that. Well, there were seven of us. My mother's got 22 grandkids and like 14 or 16 great grandkids. And so 100 for you, 100 for you. And we got to do that. A lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why he's got to do the consulting. I was going to say, yeah, Kevin, you, uh, need another, you need another job. <laughs> you see the uh, the picture behind me? Yeah. That's a wedding. That's just the kids. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah. God was my daughter's just That's a yeah. family. But you know what? Like my Trish would always say, they're all productive citizens. Oh, that's yeah. what I tell my kids all the time. My wife, uh, that's our job, to make you out to be productive citizens. That's what yep. we tell them all the time. Yep. And How I'm old like are you, Cap? Huh? How old are you? I just turned 70 in August. They look great. Uh, I, you know, it's uh, I'm hanging in there. You turn 70, they uh, found some little minor skin cancer in the back, a little brain tumor, which is fine. It's not cancerous. And I had to go for major surgery to, before I blown out the uh, hiatal hernia. But otherwise, I'm still... You don't get up. any stents, do you? Uh, four. Nice. Wow, he beat you, Ruff. See? You wanted to be a <laughs> topper. <laughs> yeah, no, not too long ago I had that done. Yeah, mm. so, uh, That's all happening, okay. bro. Come on. I get up in the morning. My wife kicks me out of bed. Go to work, you yeah. know. But uh, yeah, it's all good stuff. And uh, I married a great girl. She really is uh, outstanding. Good for you. you know. I got a. We got a little question from David Jones. I don't know if you know him. He says, "Hey, Rich, you still have those beads in your pocket you had in 120? My rosary beads? <laughs> I guess that's what he's talking about. He says beads. Beads. Well, I had you know a, a string of rosary beads, or made a string rope because you couldn't yeah, hear me in the military. Those beads is what he's saying. So I'm assuming yeah, that's what probably he's that's probably it. That's good. Yeah, because yeah. uh, Tom Cleary, God rest his soul, he had uh, rosary beads that were made of cloth. You know, so uh, my, my father gave them to me because in Korea, if you don't want to rattle a lot, to tell the enemy that you're uh, nearby. You're ah, interesting. Yeah. So my sons that went to uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, they uh, in Iraq. They uh they had the same thing. And uh I, I tell you, my one boy that's uh I mean Richie, Danny, you know, Michael, I'm, I'm proud of all these guys. They, they just uh they're in I'm concerned about them because they're in harm's way, as mm -hmm. you know. But uh, my one son, Michael, was in, in the Marines in Iraq, and then Fallujah, his first gig is that you know, he had to stand guard and the post come in. And this one guy did not want to stop, he told him, Stop, stop, and he kept up going, had to take him out. His first mm -hmm. first shot. And the people in the neighborhood wanted, you know. Bring him to court and hang him. So he went through his routine in uh, in Iraq, and uh, he comes home and his friend gets axed in the head. The one of three precinct. I remember that a few, about a few years yeah, ago. I remember that. Yep. Yeah, that was one of the guys he worked with. And I said, you know, Mike, you know, you've been through hell and back. Your friend gets hurt. You're in. They want to kill you in Iraq and all that stuff. And I mean, you okay? I said, Dad, it builds character. <laughs> are you, are you really, you no. Know, all all the boys are like that. I mean, Rich, Rich would call me up, ask me questions, back and forth, and Danny would call me and. I started to realize they were listening to my war stories. It was Danny is in you know, the caveman. They had a truck that was going through Central Park. They got stuck under those those ramps, you know, that by uh, dispatcher's office. The truck mm -hmm. got stuck underneath the bridge. 
on uh, in Central Park. So what you do, Dad? I gotta let the tires out. I go. I can remember you did that one time in rescue too. Good for you. You know they remember. See that? Yes, I got a good oak. You have done okay there, bud. Man, I, God bless him. I, 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 uh, I love him. And when uh, Richie's called me up this morning, he goes, Dad, you on that podcast? Are you kidding me? Get the hell out of there while you can. <laughs> you run, <laughs> run for the hills, son. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you still got to do one more thing. What's I, that? It's, it's that time, guns. It's that time. It is that time. It's time for not that the old school tip of the day. Take it away, Cap. The tip of the day is just to live right. And to all the guys and girls that are out there in fire and EMS and DOR and ER, just keep on studying, just keep on practicing, and that's all you got to do because that's the most important thing is to keep sharp, and this way you'll survive. That's the only tip I got. And love your family. That's it. Family first, then work. And country. Work, church, and home. And country. The man. There you go. And country. And country. Amen, I like brother. that. I like that. Now, there if you want to join a nice Templar, give me a call. <laughs> nice. What do you got? I got I got knighted last year. Did you? Yeah. You did. I did. You have to call you Sir Rich now? No, Sir no, no, no. Sir Rich. Well, well, let me ask you a question. Where's the Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> it's in Jerusalem. Is it? Underneath where he was crucified. Hmm. Can you show me the secret handshake or no? <laughs> Hold on do, you know where the treasure, do you know where the treasure is on Oak Island? Ah, he's <laughs> oh, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. Nice. Cap had a good life, man. Fuck it, all right. Yeah. Oh, oh, what does he got? The hat? Oh, he's going to knight us right now. I kid you not. Are you going to knight us right now, all three of us? Oh, he's got it. Look at that. Now, now, go ahead. Hit me up. Hit me up. Let's go. If you can zoom <laughs> it right here. I, well, let me see. You know, don't move. I'll bring you a uh, solo. Let me do this. There okay. In the middle are two men riding a horse. I right? see that. Because a nice Templar, when he started, were considered poor and they shared everything. So the nice Templar's been around and I was, uh, it's, it's part of the family, the Swiss family, because I'm, you know, my family's from Switzerland. And uh, my kids think I'm nuts, but that's okay. Well, it's all right. We're so. all nuts. Yeah. You know. Got to be a little bit to do what we do. <laughs> yeah, right. So, but, the, uh, so then the Ark of Covenant is not on Oak Island. Is that what you're uh, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, come on. Now you ruined it for me. I've been waiting no. for them to find cash for like 14 years. I'm getting tired. <laughs> I found nothing. I, my wife goes, why are you still watching that show? They're going to find it soon. I know they're going to. They got to find something. A oh. coin. Find a coin. Give me something. something. Oh, Christ. I don't know. All right. So yeah. listen. You... Go ahead. <laughs> it would be Sir Dick if we have to call you. <laughs> 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 I like you, so uh, Dick. Okay. Get him, Cap. Get, Get him. him. <laughs> love it. Gotta love it. That's good. Listen, stuff. Cap. It was a pleasure to have you on. It was yes. really uh, enjoyed. enjoyed. You had show. a great life. You had. Uh, you still got a lot, lot going on. Still, I, but, I've been uh, blessed. Lou. Yeah, I've man. been very blessed. And uh, like I said, uh, if I had a chance to do it again, I'd do it again. You know, I mean, I worked with some really great men and women. God rest his souls. Especially, you know, the nurses, you know, from Battle of the Bulge to Vietnam and Korea, you know, and the guys that I worked with in 12209 Rescue, the whole, the whole, the whole department, they were just great guys, you know, and I keep on thinking about it. And, I, and your brother, you know, the chief, he's, they love him to death, you know, Mr. Serious, but he's very smart. I call him Mr. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. dickhead. There he is. <laughs> That's a, yes, yeah, but it's all good. And, and to you, chief down in Florida, I yes, like Mark. Stop by Marco Island. Say hello to my brother Tommy. All right. Well, it's, a, it's about an hour, about an hour and a half, maybe ah, two hours total drive. Take well, a show for the take you over there. No, yeah. They, they, you, you'll laugh. You think we're funny here? Tommy is a stand up comic. There you go, bro. He is one sick best. And he has a party every year at his house. Oh, and he has is. a band called The Old Geezers. Nice. And, nice. and every year I have three of these and I have to mm. sing, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sweet Caroline. I knew you were going to say that. How do I know that? Yeah, you're not going with Neil. You got to go with Neil. I got to go with Neil Diamond. So, Jack uh, the Knife. What do you mean? Bum, Jack the bum, bum. <laughs> and if the, 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 he has about maybe like 80 people there, they all go nuts. And uh, and my wife's standing there just shaking her head. Oh, uh, as usual. Yeah, yeah, you know. That's what they do when we do what we do. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. we won't see you guys on Monday or Thursday. We'll see you the following Monday. Yeah, uh, we're going to be out in Indy. Come see us out in Indy. FDIC. 10,002. 
I got it right. 10,002, you're going to be able to pick up one of these bad boys right here. Oh, the yeah. pizza cutters will be with us. Don't you worry. <laughs> they will. Let me go meet. <laughs> that will, not only will that cut a regular pie, it'll cut a Sicilian, it'll cut a grandma, so don't worry about it, bro. Cap, you, know, you like pizza? We'll send you a pizza cutter. You pizza. got it. Please, we definitely will send you one. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll miss you. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, well, have a good time. Cap, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it, too. It's been a great night. Thank you Maybe very, very much. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Great Excellent. Yeah. Really uh, quick, guys, did you did you see this really quick? Well, what's that? Right, sis, look at this. See that? Oh, somebody yeah. uh somebody was somebody arrested. Stole it. Somebody yeah. stole the boat. We're going to go on in, in, in August. Somebody stole the boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the email is in uh, the getting salty uh, in salty dog email. He's, yeah, uh, Randy sent it to us. This is, yeah. Like where'd they take it? Uh, they dried. Yeah. They fucking ram it, ran it up on the land. These assholes. Oh. How the hell did they get it? How did they get the thing started? Like, what the hell are they doing? Go read, go read the thing on the email. Go when did that oh. happen? Last uh, night. Yeah. Oh, I can't. It's hilarious. Oh, compliments of Pee Wee in the chat. Well, he sent it to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even make that stuff up. up. No. That's crazy, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, yes. ladies. Until we see you a week from Monday. A week from Monday. That's a good guys. Yo. All right. Take care, Cap. Thank you. We'll see you at the big one, everybody. You got it. All right, guys. See you at the top floor. Good night. Thank you.